Hello, friends, and welcome again to another single serving tabletop adventure from Queen's Court Games. I am Aaron, your storyteller, and today I am joined by the crew of the Skyship Owl. In command, we have the most devilishly charming woman sky pirate in all seven sky seas playing Captain Cyrus Vance. It is Syrinx. Hey, hi. Behind the wheel, our pilot, made of 50% goblin and 50% wind sauce, playing Snargle, it's Zoe. Snargle's here! And on board, their passengers, definitely some guy and not a famous nobleman, playing Lord Nathaniel Blackbird, it's Gabe. Hi, please don't perceive me, I'll cry. And at his side, the loyal lady with fierce fists, playing bodyguard Naomi Bishop, it is V. That's me! On this week's episode, we are playing Lord Blackbird, a tale of skyfaring, daring, do, and unrequited love written by John Harper. As always, you can find the scenario and the sourced social media links below by putting exclamation point chat, sorry, by putting exclamation point cast. It's funny because I fucked that up like all seven times that we tried it. <clears throat> by putting exclamation point cast in chat on Twitch or in the show notes if you're catching us on YouTube. With all of that said, though, let me tell you a story. Our adventure takes place in the wild blue yonder, an infinite sea of naught but sky where several planets orbit around a giant pulsing central star. Gravity works. Up, nothing but sky. Down, nothing but sky until you hit the toxic soup that forms a kind of crust bottom beneath which no one dares flies. Even calling them planets is a bit of a misnomer because they're more like flying sky islands all of them orbiting around and all of them under the domain of a benevolent empire. Benevolent. <clears throat> Our crew have been hired to transport Lord Blackbird in his uh, peasant guise, in disguise, from the Imperial capital world to the remnants. The details of that mission are a bit of a secret. I'm gonna let uh, Lord Blackbird tell you himself if he decides to at some point but we're not there yet because no more than a day or two away from the central port, the owl was accosted, captured, bamboozled by an imperial warship. The Hand of Sorrow, the most advanced steam sky warship in the entire imperial fleet, sailing up alongside the owl, bringing it in on charges. The captain of this vessel, Captain Hollis, has reason to believe that the owl is flying a false flag, meaning that the crew are either smugglers, pirates, or other ne'er-do-wells. And while he waits for the wireless information to go back to run your paperwork, you know, skyship sitting behind you with the police lights on and you're just waiting, hoping nothing comes back. While he's doing that, both the crew and the passengers have been locked in the brig. And that is where the four of you find yourself as our story begins. It is obvious that this ship was not built with prison accommodations in mind. Oh, there are six cells, three on each side. The back walls and the middle walls are all solid metal. In front of you, it's like Wild West prison doors. So they're about six inches apart, not enough for you to get through, but you could definitely see and, and stick your hands out and such like that. It is sweltering hot. You don't have a perfect concept of the layout of the ship, but you can just tell that you are close to the engine room by the heat radiating off of these things. And they've been giving you water and they've been giving you food, but it's really just enough to keep you quiet. Uh, visibly uncomfortable kind of space. Every five or 10 minutes or so, 
a guard comes through, a young, fresh-faced conscript, and maybe a private, someone who is barely 18 or 19 years old and joined to serve his country. He'll come in just to make sure no one's causing any trouble, make sure no one's doing anything nefarious, make sure, and I'm sure none of you would do this, make sure no one's trying to break out. So, we are here, and you know what? Cyrus, this is not your ship, but you're still the captain. You're still in charge. I, there's no way you don't have a plan, right? Totally. I think I'll even be yelling at the, or not yelling, politely uh, asking the last uh, guard who just left to say, I really do not think it is necessary to keep us in prison cells while you check our papers. You have to at least know that, right? That's enough out of you, Sky Pirate. I left my homeworld to protect the skies from scum like you, and I'm sure when Captain Hollis gets word back, we'll be having you thrown off this ship in no time. Why ever would a cargo hauler like me be a pirate? I think Uh, those are accusations you cannot follow up on. Save it for the Admiralty Board, thief. With a sigh, uh, I will turn back to the crew and say, we need to get out and fast if they check the papers for toast. I've been pacing in my cell, dramatically goose-stepping back and forth as I've been thinking, I can't go, can't go back to jail, Captain. We gotta go. Uh, any thoughts? The... Like, I've got way too much of a pretty face to actually be in jail. I wouldn't last a week, so let's not do that. Is there any uh, crevice that we may be able to pull open? Uh, Any kind of weaker spot in one of the bars, at my end at least? Well, this is an excellent point. Um, We don't have to do this right now if you want to wait for a more opportune moment to start bending things around. If you look at your character sheet, you will see four traits. Um, In your case, it's ex-imperial soldier, smuggler, survivor, and warrior. And then beneath that, a series of tags. To accomplish any task in Lady Blackbird, you are going to count up the number of traits and tags on your sheet that apply to the thing you're trying to do that you think apply, that you might be able to convince me apply. Whatever that number is, that is the number of dice that you will roll. Six-sided dice, uh, anything four or higher is a success. The difficulty for common things is three. The difficulty for outrageous things is six. And that gives you a sense of how uh, how to measure what you think your chances are. Uh, but while our good captain sorts through her sheet and uh, goes to figure those kind of things out, my lord, this is not what you signed up for. No, no, not at all. In fact, it's kind of exactly the opposite. Um, it may or may not be exactly what I was trying to avoid. Um, this is fine. The captain probably has a plan. She definitely has a plan, right? She has a plan. Well, if the captain doesn't have a plan, Naomi, loyal bodyguard, are you thinking of a plan in the meantime? Had a couple ideas, but they kind of involve the doors being open at some point. Uh, if the we know the guard's going to come back, so if these doors can find at least one of these doors can find themselves open somehow, I can always try and wrestle the guard down, uh, hopefully quietly, and see if he's got keys. I would be surprised if in any of the decades that follow this moment, you will ever manage to do something quietly. But I hope for you. We will see. What were you going to say, Lord? Well, um, I could always just ask him, right? I could just ask him to, (laughs) I mean, I definitely need a glass of water. This is, I mean, it's been at least half an hour, you know, like. I'm afraid the guard just left, but if you want a glass of water, I am willing to give you mine in the meantime while we uh, 
finish this plan. And I'll uh, slide my glass through the bars, like, a bit closer to uh, Tristan. Wow. Um, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, sort of reach, I read out and sort of take it. Um, whilst I'm sort of sat there in, in the cell, I begin nervously running my hand along the rim of the glass. And whilst it makes that um, sort of low whining noise um, as the glass begins to sing, the water inside begins to sort of bubble and whirl like a little whirlpool. Mm. Okay, this is fine. This is fine. This is fine. Deep breaths, deep breaths. Okay. Naomi, was it? Could you maybe check your rails and and all at the door? Maybe if there's a weak spot in yours, I'll do the same in mine. Snargo would do the same in his. Maybe we can find a weak spot and uh, ambush the next guard. I mean, it's, it's worth a shot. That's actually a good idea. And I've been scanning my cell for like vents that I could maybe crawl through some sort of means of getting uh, up and out or through the bars. Well, you do have an egress point vent wise. It is in the center of the room. The, the only thing keeping this place from baking like an oven is a series of ventilation ducts above the center aisle. But these are Imperials, not idiots. They know better than to put that in your cell. It's not that kind of movie. Uh, Naomi, to your point, you are a 90% muscle and 10% brain. What do you mean weak spot in these bars? They're all weak spots when you got guns like these. See, you say that, but I, I, I'm, I'm, is it, is it worth using my secret now or saving it for later? I would think you probably on your character sheet have a, a big bucket of traits and tags that would get you towards the, the bending things, right? And I think your secret does not have the once per session tag on it. Your secret just says, oh. I get to break shit with my sledgehammer hands. I thought that that was just, I thought it was just all secrets. Um, but yes, I, I, I can do that. Yes. Are you going to uh, take your own initiative or are you going to wait for the captain's orders? Uh, I mean... If the captain doesn't know that I can do this, right? Like, I, up until this point, I haven't had a reason to wait or to, to show off how strong I am. Uh, so my thought would be that Cyrus has no reason to know that I would be able to do this, right? Theoretically. Uh, that is the case. She did ask you to see if you could find some weak spots, and you're like, I can do that. Uh, my question is more like, if you're communicating this to the captain, uh, Cyrus, is it your intent to wait until the guard comes back and then like cause a distraction, then open the doors? Or do you want everyone out of the cells before the guard returns? Ideally, if when the guard comes down, there's a spot in the shadows maybe hidden when he comes in that a person could hide in, that would be ideal to have someone stand there and ambush them when they come down. If not, I think it would be ideal to be out before they get down here, because otherwise they might start screaming and running up whilst we haven't even exited ourselves, and that's not ideal. Of course, you don't want to raise the alarm at the very first moment. I see Lord Blackbird having a thought. Perhaps. Um, would it maybe help if, uh, for instance, the lot was a little more brittle? Um... Hang on. Um, I sort of move over to it. Um, right. Don't worry about it, first of all. Second of all, don't, maybe just don't tell anyone I've done this. Okay, great. Um, and he, so I, I put my um, finger sort of above the glass and sort of make a, a pull-up movement, a motion, um, and the water spirals out of the glass in kind of a whirlpool and I send it forward towards the lock and I'm gonna just try and I'm gonna try and use my magic to direct the water inside the lock and freeze it so that it's more breakable 
An excellent idea. Well, add up those sorcery tags, your magic tags. You'll have channeling because you're using the water. And figure out what your dice pool is going to be. As we wait to see what the success may or may not be in that case, uh, Cyrus Snargle, I think this is this is the first time you've seen him do magic. I'm impressed. Uh, I stop kind of goose stepping for a moment just to observe this, and I'm just like, what are you doing? Oh. I'll explain in a minute. Just don't worry about it. It is most fascinating. What other tricks do you have up your sleeve? I do wonder. Can you change color? Can you change shape? Uh, um, just to hold the questions momentarily. And it is, I sort of... Um, look- okay, but when you're done, I have so many. Great, fantastic. Uh, an inquiring mind is certainly the, the, the show Star of girl, someone maybe- who will go far in life. Maybe keep them from for when we are back on the owl. I think that would be better. Yeah. Shutting up, Captain. Don't there worry about a, it. There is a dusting of uh, rosy red uh, across uh, my cheeks at uh, Cyrus's comment, <laughs> and it has not faded yet. Um, okay. So, so, what did you come up with? Channeling, I have, and uh, just to confirm, this is the the number of tags that I have indicate the number of dice I have in my pool. Is that correct? Uh, no, um, you all have, uh, where it says pool seven, mm-hmm. those are seven freebie dice. And you can spend those whenever you want to get more of an edge on something that's really important or to try something that you're actually not very good at. Okay. But the only way to get those dice back is um, like through, a, essentially this game's equivalent of a short rest or by hitting your keys. So they're there and you should use them, but just keep in mind they are a finite resource. Okay. Um, otherwise, what am I? What am I rolling here? That's for the. Other <clears throat> sheet. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, looking at your sheet, why don't you read off for me the tags and traits that you think apply to this situation? Okay. Um, I think I will be going with, if I may, um, spellcaster, channeling, uh, storm blood. Um, hmm. Those are all That's... under master sorcerer, which also counts. Okay, so my sorcerer, and then uh, perhaps sense. Um, it seems a, a little a little loosey goosey, but um, it might help me get a proper feel of where the tumblers are in order to get that freezing correct. Uh, that would be correct. The ones in brackets are ones you haven't unlocked yet. That is ah. what you will use your XP to do. Uh, but based on that count, you've got four. Mm-hmm. Um, this is this is easy sorcery for you. I mean, for, first okay. of all, you're Lord fucking Blackbird. You're a god <laughs> among men. And second, you're also a wizard. Petty mortal locks cower before you. So it shouldn't be that hard for you to jam this thing up with some liquid. That cool. said, if you want that little extra confident urge, you want to add some of your pool dice, that is a decision entirely up to you. Oh, go on then. I think I'll add the one in. Why not? Seems fun. Okay. All right. And then you're just going to click. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, oh no. Oh no. I'm very nervous. I'm very nervous. There's a very pretty lady looking at me. Uh, it's bad enough that you've got zero successes, it's but the very, fact that it's four of the dices were ones. <laughs> it's very warm in here. Don't, if it helps, listen. you you can blame Snargle a little bit because I am giving you the incessant nagging questions as you're going about, and you're like, please stop, please shh. Yes, definitely blame Snargle for this. Blame Snargle for everything. <laughs> it's probably my fault. I mean, in fairness, we don't know for certain that it doesn't help, right? Because Lord Blackbird isn't trying to ruin the lock or, or remove the lock, just trying to make it easier. Uh, right. So, uh, it'll, it'll. I mean, for better or for worse, uh, I'm just going to punch the lock. <laughs> Are we referring to the? Out of the way. <laughs> are we referring to the lock on your cell door or the lock on the door that leads out? Because I, I think at the moment we're talking about the cells, right? The cells, yeah, yes. All right. Yep. Uh, so I'm I'm just going to punch it, and then when it breaks, um, no, totally, Lord Lord Blackbird, or yeah, Tristan, excuse me, because you're not Lord Blackbird. We don't know you're Lord Blackbird, uh, because of course, uh, Tristan, you did such a good job. Thank you for helping us with that lock. That'll 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 be the story. <laughs> Uh, so, if it wasn't surprising enough to see uh, Tristan, this peasant, doing very sophisticated magic, I imagine the surprise level in the room jumps a good three or four levels. When Naomi, how, describe for me how do you how do you hit it? Is it like a haymaker, or, or what is your preferred 
lock destruction punch look like? Oh, oh, it's just a simple jab. Just straight, just like, just straightforward. Just, just real quick. Like not, like, if, if you blink, you would miss it. Aside from like the ear splitting sound, right? right? Um, But it's just like, just kind of like crack, crack the knuckles, right? Like stretch the wrists out and then just, well, boof, and then done. A little well, boof, classic. Yep. No. Exactly. Yeah, remember, you know. Remember that from my my pit fighting lessons. Yeah. There's mm-hmm. the boof, and then there's, there's kapow, and they're they're different. Mm-hmm. You got you know yeah. the, the the key thing is learning when to use which one. Really. Exactly. This is not a kapow moment. This is a boof <laughs> for sure. Right. Yeah. Well, uh, whether or not uh, Lord Blackbird's magic helped, whether or not Tristan's magic helped in this moment, the lock does explode open it is it is spectacular uh thank god no one's in the cell opposite you because that is like a little landmine shrapnel explosion of, of metal bits uh and you can you can definitely hear inside this room uh the metal buckling protesting not sure how far that's going to go out onto the other side but it it was loud who are you people i wouldn't worry about it That was most impressive. What do you do for a living, I mean? I'm, um, I'm a bodyguard. She's lock puncher. Also that. Incredible. Yep. I am uh, absentmindedly flexing my muscles a little bit, not to be uh, underdone by uh, Naomi's obvious strength in this situation. (laughs) (laughs) Just positioning myself to uh, still look impressionable. (laughs) Giving Tristan the good angle on the muscle, you know. Mm, Definitely. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. (sighs) Every angle's a good angle. What? Okay. Um, (laughs) (laughs) I leave the cell. Um, I'm sorry. Naomi, you are amazing. Okay, um, someone definitely heard that, right? Um, yes, I, um, I do, I do have an idea. Um, why don't you, Tristan, um, stay in the cell? Okay. Right? Um, uh, kind, kind of as bait, right? Uh, and I am actually gonna go hide. I'm going to use, uh, some, some of my own abilities. I'm gonna go hide and I'm gonna wait for whoever's gonna come in. Uh, and then I'm going to try and uh, and restrain this person uh, and potentially get um, keys from them so we don't have to punch any more locks. Great. Great. Yes. Yeah, a Amazing. question. How many other doors are there? Like, what? There's three cells, right? So, who's with uh, who? There's, there's six. six. Yeah, mm-hmm. six, six cells, um, three on each side. And you were all in separate cells, but at this point, it's nothing for Naomi to break out her own cell and then to also break Tristan out. You could break everybody out if you wanted to. I mean, look at those fucking hands. Yes, all right. Um, Naomi, was it? Why don't you break this lock as well? It'll help you with the the guard. Because, well, two is better than one, isn't it? If you're going to break out the captain as well, break me out as well. You might as well just do everyone. I mean, if I didn't know any better, I'd say that it was just because you just wanted to watch me punch things some more. But yes, you'd better do, do it. it quickly now that the sound is still lingering. Well, fine. And a little woof and and uh, across <laughs> all. <laughs> it's the sound now. It's do you do you use just the one hand or is it like double fist and we're like woof 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 woof? Um, it, if if the locks were bigger, right? I mean, you it would go like one one two, but like the, these locks are fairly simple. They only need the one. Um, but you know, I mean, you want to you want to mix it up a little bit. So you do a jam and then you do a cross, and you know, so you wanna you gotta gotta mix it up. Let me get my pen out here, and I'm gonna take some some violence notes in case. Mm-hmm. Ever as uh, as Naomi mm-hmm. does that, uh, I will turn to Tristan and say, uh, perhaps it is best for you to, as talented as you are, maybe act, seem as if something happened, something fell in here, so that is why all of the noise is happening, and you yell for a guard, perhaps, and then the noise doesn't cause any sp- suspicion, right? Great. Yes. Um, I believe the term used was bait. Makes me incredibly nervous. It's fine. This is fine. I can do this. I can do this. Don't worry about it. God you God. just managed to control water with your hands. I'm sure a little <laughs> acting is nothing for you. <laughs> you know, it's, not, it's just sort of basic elemental magic. Okay. Um, 
I, I just amble my way back inside the cell, um, and I'm gonna sort of prepare myself <laughs> um, for when Naomi's quite done breaking everybody out, and then I'm gonna cause a scene. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, there's two things that have happened. One, uh, Captain Vance, I believe that these people have executed your plan to perfect order, right? So you should definitely be hitting your key of the commander every yes, time. Yes, sir. Yeah, will you read that for the audience so they know what's going on? Uh, so I have key of the commander. Uh, you are accustomed to giving orders and having them obeyed. Hit your trait when you come up with a plan and give orders to make it happen. There you go. So um, for those of you at home, uh, the way that Lord, uh, the way that Lady Blackbird, the name system works, is uh, every character has three keys. They lean into your personality traits, and that is the only way you get XP. This game rewards you for living up to the trope that defines your character, uh, and it pretty much tells you if you can't think of something to do, look at one of your keys and figure out the fucking coolest way to use that. So, uh, Steering will be getting the first experience point of the session. I am sure there are more to go. That said, second question. I know uh, Naomi and Captain Vance, you're going to sidle up alongside the door where the guard's going to come through, yeah? <clears throat> And if I remember correctly, Naomi, you said something about use my skills, which means you're about to read off your character sheet, yeah? Uh, yes. Um, so as an ex-slave, I have abilities uh, in, in sneaking uh, and all, all of that stuff. Um, but I, I also, uh, as a bodyguard, can restrain folks. Um, so I guess it's a question of uh, what what is... Is it worth it to try and like hide uh, before the guard comes in, or are we just going to jump right into a? Uh, they're going to burst in, and then it'll be about restraining. Sounds like a question for the captain. Yes, uh, I think that if we are lucky, only one when um, one will enter, and then you try to do, keep them silent, keep them down. Then we can take the keys and look hopefully get out with them great if they don't see us as long as they don't then that is a bonus uh well um the rules do allow you to help one another if your character is in a position to help another character you can give them a die from your pool now that comes out of your discretionary seven so if you used one now, you'd have six left. But if the roll fails, you get that dice back. You only get charged if the task succeeds. <clears throat> so that said, one of you, um, as you get into sneaky position, will be uh, like the lead character here, the one that's actually going to make the roll, and then the other one can't assist. Question. Shoot. Uh, am I allowed to use traits from like different... Oh yeah, your whole sheet. Okay. If if you okay. go down four categories and there's 18 things, then like go to a games workshop, spend 20 bucks, come back with your bucket and dump that fucker on the table. You get all those dice. Great. Wonderful. Please do not go to games workshop. I take that back. That is not an endorsement. Go anywhere but go to your friendly local local game store. <laughs> I did like the analogy though. Yeah, yeah, yeah that was good. Yeah. That was good. <laughs> all right. I think this is pretty tied because I think I would also do fairly good in this, but... Well, uh, at this moment, I think the most appropriate thing to do is have you both roll and see who uh, upstages the other person, right? Ooh, I like that. Definitely, yes. <laughs> All right. My so flexing little... muscles agree. <laughs> I've got a little flag that just says uh, Captain Vance on it and I'm twirling <laughs> it around cheering for you. <laughs> Oh, that's an interesting thing that just happened, Snorgle. I've watched the cameras, and I believe everybody in this room laughs at the same time. So what is mm -hmm. the key you just hit? I hit the key of banter, and it says, you have a knack for snappy comments. Hit your key when Snorgle says something that makes the other players laugh, or when you explain something using your pilot techno jargon. So that is one of Snorgle's key. Every time we all laugh at a Snorgle joke, uh, Zoe will be taking some XP on uh, his sheet. Amazing. Well-deserved. <laughs> yep. So, who's gonna... I, I cannot think of a, of, a, of a way to say this that is not going to upset me. Who's going to show first? 
I'm I'm counting. Hold on, I'm counting. Uh, read read the list out, uh, so we all know what your what your things are. Are you working with? Uh, okay, so going from from top to bottom, uh, pit fighter, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm combat tested. Um, I don't want to be brutal about it, but uh, something tells me that being brutal about it is probably okay, right? Well, I'll ask um, before you keep counting, uh, if you're going to use brutal, the results will be brutal. So are you okay with like maybe not just quiet in this guy, but instead like... I mean, no, right? That, that, was, that was kind of the question. Like, okay. Yeah. Okay. You can have so, that dice if you, if you want to cause a medical bill that would be in the tens of thousands of American dollars. Well, this is in America. It's fine. Uh, all right. <laughs> so pit fighter combat tested uh, fast. Mm-hmm. Uh, bodyguard, mm-hmm. awareness, because oh, I need to, yeah, obviously, um, threats. Sure. Okay. Uh, defend, because I'm defending Tristan, because we're using him as bait. Uh, yeah, that's a little bit there. I think, um, defend is more about things happening to you. But I'm a bodyguard. So that's why I would say no, because I'm defending others as a bodyguard. Oh, okay, okay. So what, you're at seven now? Seven, yep. Uh, <laughs> Stop, like you're to, scaring me. I would like to disarm him and also restrain him. Mm-hmm. So like both of those things, right? Like just because those are, those are the goals. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I... <laughs> I told you it's a lot. It's a lot. No, that's um, what makes the game fun. It says here's your here's your skill set. Do this as often as possible. Pile up all the dice. Yeah. And just um, throw them all out. <laughs> so then then it kind of becomes uh there's there's for, for X slave, I have like tough. I don't know that, what that that, that one, one is means. definitely more about enduring damage okay. or doing dangerous things. But right next to that is endure. So they're two separate things. So that's why I'm. I was like, mm, I don't know. Yeah, I think they're they're both in terms of like. So tough would be if you are like uh, moving something heavy or like trying to hold a door shut, and then endure is about like long term physical action. Is my mm. read on it? Okay. Um, don't worry, you've still got like seventy dice already. You don't so it's need not the worst dice. thing in the world. <laughs> I mean, I can, I can stop now. These these guys aren't nobles, right? No. Okay. All right. Then I don't get I don't get a bonus for that either. So um, what's the what's the total you come up with? So nine, if I don't take anything from like slave or keen, because in keen there's things like insightful and like aware, and I'm just kind of like, eh, not really. Yeah. So So nine. Okay. Uh, having heard that list, Cyrus. I am sweating. <laughs> 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 All right, here we go. Um, Ex Imperial Soldier. Uh, does that count as one because it's a trait or? Yep, do... you get that. Okay, tactics. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, a long shot, uh, but Imperial Warships because we are technically right now on an Imperial Warship. I mean, you could say that you you know the layouts of these places, you know how they operate, so you know it's going to be exactly nine minutes and 32 seconds before he shows up on his next uh, rip patrol. There you go, and I know the exact little corner to stand in to have the best shadows, thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, then, Smuggler. Um, well, I don't know if smuggler counts, but in that trade, I have a few that would count, I think. I have a uh, sneak. Mm-hmm. I have hide. Mm-hmm. I have camouflage. Well, <laughs> wait, Look at her I'm getting sorry. jealous. Wait, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. Sneak and hide count? Because if that's the case, then we're up to 12. Uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm right now, my nodding along is just listening to the argument. My participation does not by itself imply belief. Okay, I uh, just, I'm, I'm just saying, uh, if, if, if Cyrus gets sneak and hide, then I get three more dice because I also right, have okay. sneak and hide. Well, Naomi, I understand yours is bigger and that's fine. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, but right now, um, this is also about teaching the kind of game and letting people see what it's like going through the list and kind of seeing how that plays through. Um, so you, uh, I would say like sneak less so because you're not actually moving. The hide will be important. Yeah. Uh, because you're trying to stay out of the way. Mm-hmm. Uh, so then I'll only take hide. 
All right. Uh, then I have in my survivor trade, I have tough, which could be useful for uh, grappling with someone. Now that one we already kind of talked about with Naomi. It's it's more about physical exertion than less. Oh yeah, I have the same. I also have uh, endure later on. Uh, mm -hmm. All right, um, <laughs> maybe a funny one, but I, I don't know. Um, I have one that is called Creepy Stare, so I could make the card very uncomfortable <laughs> by uh, creepily staring at them. <clears throat> uh, so this is a uh, it, this this game has its uh, has its roots in Powered by the Apocalypse, <laughs> and one of the key tenets of Powered by the Apocalypse is to do it you have to do it. So if you want to use Creepy Stare when you go to describe this interaction, you're gonna have to tell me exactly how you leer or creep this this guy out uh, as he comes in. Uh, I, I if that happens, <coughs> I would very much like to do it when he's grappled. <laughs> <laughs> like maybe pinned by now Omi is something. And if that happens, I will happily uh describe it to you. Mm -hmm. Um so that is it. Other than that, I have uh, a warrior. I mean obvious. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Look at these muscles. <laughs> um and then I have battle hardened. Um, I will give you most of those things, um, actually. Uh, and the only one I think you missed is up under Ix Imperial Soldier. You have soldiers. You know how they're trained. You know how they fight. So you went through Imperial Basic Training where they had to fight with the sticks and you know all the moves that he knows. I know. Yes. <clears throat> so that said, uh, and I, I cannot overstate, there is a tremendous prize on the line because whichever one of you rolls higher is going to impress Tristan more you wait, the noise, you hear on the other side a stereotypical guard accent like, Oi, what was that? And then, uh, well, no, let's rewind for a second, because before that, it's the two guards saying, uh, I think I'll have whiskey and cigars tonight. And then the little alert icon goes up and he breaks his path and he starts coming over and the door opens and... Really nice. to start, I make a scene. I make, immediately I'm making a scene so that their, their attention is fully on me. So um, I'm sort of, I stagger out of the cell um, and sort of catch myself heavily on the wall. And I'm like, help, there's been an accident. <laughs> because he has, I have no idea what else to say. What did they, I mean, these, these crazy people are about to attack someone right in front of me. I don't know how to help, but I'm going to try. Oh, you've You're doing done the, wonderfully. <laughs> Thank you. You've done the important part. You attracted the guard's attention in the center and the confusion, he's just like, he, he's beelining down the center. And he, first question, how the fuck do you get out of your cell? Second question, like, what do you mean someone's gonna be a Oh shit, it's me! And then hands come clobbering in from each side uh, as Naomi and the captain just, just do good work uh, stripping this man of his consciousness. <laughs> and then- Very uh, nice way to put that. <laughs> yeah. So the guard comes slumping down to the ground. I, I mean, Cyrus, do you, do you want to talk about what happened with those dice there, or should we just move on? I don't want to talk about it. I don't think it's important to know who was better. I think it's important to know that I said the supporting words, and Naomi was silent. Um, oh, so yeah. right, yeah. And you know, Never mind. Of... <laughs> Go ahead. Never mind the fact that uh, I am currently scribbling Naomi's name on the top of the flag now. <laughs> to, uh, I, I saw what happened. I think Captain. we're going to have a talk after this about your responsibilities on ship. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and wow. I kind of hide the, the marker away. <laughs> I have so many questions about where the flag and the marker came from, but I'm also a little <laughs> afraid to ask. I, I'm considering some Tweety Bird uh, shenanigans with Snargle, but I think it's up to you. <laughs> well, we have uh, plenty of time uh, to figure out the kind of mischief that Snargle gets up to. Uh, so right now, guard is unconscious, door is open. As you look out, it opens up into a small, uh, it's not quite a guard post. It's more like a, a room outside the cells where a guard could sit and there's a small table. And like if it were modern area, you'd find like a radio and maybe a crossword puzzle. It's just like a little antechamber where the guard can sit, still guarding the cell block, but without being in there with you. Um, the guard is there, has its has his uniform, um, probably carrying like a nightstick around. From there though, you know, like you gotta get off the ship, right? But three problems. One, where is the ship? How are you gonna get out of the hangar? Two, 
The Owl is a, a great vessel, Captain. I don't mean to dis- disrespect it at all. Super impressive what you've managed to do, but it's not an Imperial war cruiser. This, the, the Hand of Sorrow hauls ass. Yeah. And if you try to, I mean, it caught up with you when you were out there. So unless you can figure out a way to, to impede the steering or the engines or something, you're not going to make it very far. <clears throat> and three, uh, the only guns on this ship bigger than Naomi's are the ones lining broadside along the cruiser. Uh, and Cyrus, you have a lot to say about the Imperial Navy, but man, their gunnery is on point. And the Owl is is not really suited for, for taking that caliber of weaponry. I mean, I wouldn't want the Owl's guns to compete to mine, now would I? Mm. <clears throat> <clears throat> so... Those are the three problems that you will all understand. Like, intuitively, that's kind of what you need to do. Now, how are we going to do it? Well, I will resort to Snargle's uh, knowledge on ships in general, because uh, they might know some weak spots of the ship where we could try to sneak in, uh, put a little screw in it, sabotage it. Maybe someone with beautiful hardened fists could smash something into pieces. Um. I've been thinking about that, Captain. You see that vent? That vent right right above us in the middle there? I'm willing to bet it leads to the engine room. Now I could get in there and I could crawl down to the engine room, cause all sorts of havoc. Like Kale good at putting the ship back together. I am an expert at stress testing things. And boy, can I stress test their engines for them. How big is this vent? Like, can I squeeze someone not goblin sized up there with me? I would say probably not. Um, The Imperials are not fans of goblins. There are no goblins in the Imperial Navy. um, And you can change shape, which will help you get around some of those corners. yeah, I think uh, unless you can figure out a way to, mm, they could I mean, they they could navigate around the old-fashioned way, uh, but if you're going to the vent, that's going to be a snargle solo mission. What you think, Captain? I'd have to do it on my own, because I don't think any of you small enough to fit up there. You're like the size of my bicep, so I'm I'm guessing not. What's exciting is I can get smaller. <laughs> what? Oh, what? Hang on. Is the, is the, wait, I'm, I'm a goblin. Didn't, they didn't teach about goblins in rich noble school? Well, first of all, I don't know what you're talking about, rich noble school. There's <laughs> no such thing. And, uh, it was called the academy shift. Anyway. <clears throat> it becomes apparent, Snuggle, that uh, our, our friend here, definitely not Lord Blackbird, was uh, either sleeping, flirting, scribbling notes, not paying attention during goblin lesson. Why don't you catch all of us up what are goblins like in this universe? Uh, goblins are actually pretty unique. They're, um, <laughs> as uh, I believe the storyteller mentioned, they are kind of uh, a scourge upon the Empire. The Empire does not think fondly of them, but they are a colorful little characters that can change their uh, size and skin color. They can become fatter, thinner, taller, bigger, um, shrinking themselves. Uh, very, very cool chameleon effect that can, like, be used to distract or run away or any sort of situation. Grow self, shrink self, become red, become green. Little, I hmm? literally can hulk out. Yeah. Uh, to say nothing in Sungle's case of also being one hell of a sky pilot. Yes. Uh, I damp all of my enthusiasm into just making mischief and flying the owl really fast. Uh, well, Captain, uh, it's your crew member and also your plan. Are you okay sending Snargle off on his lonesome? I think they will do just fine. Uh, but they can go in, they can wait in the vent until we get in the room as well and then wreak havoc once we are there as well. In the meantime, there is a guard down here with, well, full uh, uniform still, and I think that could be very useful. Um, 
My idea would be to take the uniform, put it on, lead one other guard down here, uh, let our lovely uh, iron fist here also take them out, take the uniform, and then two people who work in this warship are just escorting someone else somewhere. That is a wonderful Obviously for idea. Questioning. <clears throat> um, it could definitely fit Snarkle because Snark- Snarkle can can change shape. It definitely cannot fit Naomi because they do not let thunderous Viking lords work in the navy. Apparently, uh, I mean, I also am rude. It's absolutely so rude. <laughs> hey, you know what? Discrimination in hiring is one of the many problems people have with the Empire. So, hey, <laughs> I am sure many. that. <clears throat> Our Tristan here would look lovely in a uniform. Is that a, <sighs> a fact? On a, on, you know, on occasion. I, just... I mean, I would like to believe it as a fact, and we'll see, won't we? <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, sure, I can, I'm sure I can do, do something with that. Um, question. How would everyone feel about a little bit of something to keep the crew occupied whilst we're kind of, you know... Um, futzing with things. How would you that like would them? be absolutely marvelous. Great. I mean, I'm just saying, usually storms aren't something that, um, you know, sky pirates like dealing with particularly, and perhaps if one were to show up, people might start to focus more on that and the, not pay any attention to any of us. Hey, hey, Captain, before I get boosted up into this event, I have an idea. Um... That guard might have a radio on him. The the little guard out cove out there might have radios. I don't want to get lost. I want to like establish a rendezvous. Do we want to give me a radio and find you guys a radio and we can keep in touch? I take off the radio of the guard on the floor right now and just toss it to Snargle and be fast thinking. Ah, uh, <clears throat> yeah, thanks. Uh, the Empire does have a uh, wireless technology. That's how they're currently running your ship plates right now. Um, but it's not one of those neat little like wallet sized Nokia's. Uh, this is a, a, a chonky little guy. Uh, you're talking more like um like the Bioshock voice recorder, something the size of a, of a nice VCR. Uh, big, probably has a strap on it to carry it, maybe a little hand crank that you can power it up if the battery runs low. It is a serious piece of equipment. And of course, there's no nice little microphone. That baby has like a big horn on it, the kind uh, that you'd find on a steamship in olden times. I imagine to carry it properly without like dragging it on the ground, I actually increase my size a little bit to deal with it. (laughs) Uh, So... Uh, three questions that come to mind for me. Uh, one, uh, Snargle, you're going to get your boost up from Naomi and head on. And then two, uh, Cyrus, it is your plan to meet Snargle in the engine room and have Snargle kind of like work you on that direction. Uh, but before that, you're going to see if you can find another guard costume, perhaps. Uh, and then second, um, Tristan, this question I think is less for me and more for some other people in the room. Where are you changing? I mean, I don't, well, no, you're quite right. All the doors are gone. Well, um, this is fine. It, I mean, I, I'm, everyone's an honorable individual here. I, I'm, I'm sure that I can just sort of, you know, ask them all to turn around and they, they will. Um, yeah, um, it'll be fine. Okay? It's fine. Okay. Um, I don't want anyone to out themselves. So everyone except for uh, Tristan, <laughs> close your eyes real quick. Raise your hand if you're an honorable individual who doesn't turn around. Okay, put your hands down. (laughs) All right. So that information now being hidden from folks. Well, um, it's a little, well, it's a little tight, but um, I'm sure it'll do. How's it look, Cyrus? It looks like it was made to fit you. Thank you. Um, I, I'm, I'm honestly just glad that they, they used the linen and instead of sort of, you know, the, the, the cotton that, you know, it's quite common. But, um, oh, that super that's scratchy really stuff? Uh, right. Oh. <clears throat> Gross. Gross. <clears throat> Which I know because I'm weaving. Yeah, obviously. Oh, you weave as well? Yes. 
Yes. What is there I, this I man do. cannot do? <laughs> I am multi talented. Protect himself. <laughs> fair. A fair point. Mm-hmm, Hurtful, mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. fair. <laughs> All right. Well, um, 33% of you having enjoyed the, uh, the eye full snargle now boosting up into the when you make that face it kind of makes it obvious which person i'm talking about i'm just saying we have to work on your discretion captain uh, no, no one knows no one knows. Oh, right, yeah, no right, right. how would they know how would they know <laughs> they're how never they gonna know <laughs> uh so, uh, so uh, yeah captain, snargle. um I'm on channel nine and I'll just make a show of turning the radio to channel nine after giving like a quick cursory, like which channels are they using in the ship? So I'm um, trusting on you, Snargle. You managed to keep hidden from me two weeks whilst on my own ship. I think you'll manage an hour in here. I'm very sneaky. All right, you all take care, keep in touch. I'll let you know when I have given this ship one heck of a stress test. I just go over and pick Snargle up, just one hand. <laughs> one hand. And just <laughs> hoist, hoist, just, very, yeah. um, very like cheerleader lip, you're just like. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep, not a problem at all. Just hold up, hold up my hand so Snargle can get in the vent. Checking your phone, doing your taxes with the other one. Mm-hmm. Wait, do you have a phone? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Snargle disappears up into the vent. The spotlight there for a second. Snargle, you are in the guts of this thing, John McLeaning your way down the ventilation tube. I have no idea what the inside of Imperial Warship does. You are a mechanic and a goblin, so tell me what it looks like when you finally thunk down from the vent in the room you want to be in. Dog is barking. <laughs> so uh, give him a moment. Rex, lay down. Uh, we can come back on that until the dog has settled. Uh, definitely not Lord Blackbird. Captain Vance, Naomi, you would like to ambush another guard? Or, you're looking to, or, are, you just, or are you just looking to find more costume? Um, I think ideally... Uh, Tristan could go up there in uniform, find another guard soul, and then take them back down here so that we don't have to run around as suspicious. Oh, so you would like uh, Tristan to put on some of his acting skills. Maybe go to a barracks nearby and be like, hey, uh, can you help me with something real quick? I gotta move the Shemina gig to the blah, 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 and then lure another victim in. He did it once before. It was lovely. He could do it once more. Oh, um, you. All right. Okay. I'm going to go and find a new friend who will uh, then immediately get clobbered around the head. Also, yes. two things. I think, uh, Captain Vance, that's your leadership key again, right? So make sure that as you're doing these things, you're keeping track of the times you hit your keys and your experience points. Naomi, are, you just got this guy out of jail are you gonna let him wander off on his own to god knows what happens to to, to all the danger in this ship i can't go by myself like i i can't join him unfortunately not not as i am unless he pretends to be escorting me right and then and then we find somebody else and then be like oh yeah like I'm, i'm having trouble with this prisoner can you uh you know, can 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 you come help me? Like down in their cell, there's just something wrong. Can you help me? I couldn't leave her unattended, um, but that's the only way that I can see me wandering around this ship. Oh, I was going to make a joke, semi-related. Uh, Tristan, have you ever wanted to imagine Naomi in handcuffs? But then I remembered she came from the slave pied fighting pits, and that makes it weird. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's, it's it's actually a little <laughs> insensitive. Um, that's, yeah. I'm a little hurt about that. Thank you. You know what? I apologize, and yeah. I will uh, remand myself to imperial sensitivity training. Please, uh, following this episode. Please do. Thank you. How dare you? Yeah. Absolutely. All of that said, that plan would work. Uh, Tristan, if you'd like to escort your bodyguard for once, flip the script a little bit, mm, and absolutely. see if you can't find your way to a barracks or another. Maybe just grab the first person. I don't know. You know what? You tell me. Oh, fantastic. Um, I think I am going to just have a walk uh, along this this warship. I mean, I've, I've never been aboard a, a warship before. This is, this is kind of incredible, honestly. Um, 
so I'm kind of just enjoying myself as I take a little walk. Um, and I, I think I come across uh, someone who's about the same age as me, perhaps um, someone who's relatively new to the force, quite like our uh, friend who's currently in the in the brig unconscious. Um, someone perhaps a little more susceptible to uh, the charms of someone like me. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think I will just go over and uh, say, um, hi, have, have you have you seen Tim anywhere? Have you seen uh, Tim? Excuse me, uh, Tim Scott or, or, or Tim Phelps? Bryant, actually. Oh, Bryant, uh, from A Division? Yeah. Oh, here's the thing about A Division. Yeah, there was a big uh, scheduling mix-up. I think um, the, the, the offloading of the parts came in late, uh, so like first shift had to stay on later. Um, and then that's why, yeah, I saw you. It's, it's a big snafu up in command. So I think uh, I think he's down actually um, on fourth deck, uh, working um, with the, uh, the the. I've totally mind blanked on what could possibly go there, uh, on the on the um, on the the power auger for the, yeah. the coal supply to the of engine course. room. Yeah. Yeah. Oh God. Well, that that is <clears throat> so frustrating. The general wanted this task done within the next 10 minutes. I don't, I don't think I can find him in time. Would you mind just giving me a hand, please? I, I, I'm aware it's cutting into your schedule, but I don't, I owe you a favor. Well, now is the time, Lord Blackbird, for you to tally up some traits and we'll see what comes of that. All right. Um, so, as a, as, a, as a noble, I'm quite good at um, maybe getting people to do what I'd like them to do instead of really what they'd like to do. Mm -hmm. Um, So I think I'd like to apply my Imperial Noble um, trait to this um, Mm -hmm. with the etiquette uh, tag to be um, kind of assimilating myself into a social situation such as the military mechanic of this vessel. Mm -hmm. Um, I would like to use my uh, trait of charm. Naturally. With my tag of charisma. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I would quite like to um, exert some presence over this young soul by sort of stepping quite close into them, um, so they sort of get a, get a whiff of maybe sort of sandalwood and pine of, uh, of my cologne. Um, <clears throat> That's what nobility smells like in this universe. Yeah, it really does. It's a, it's a, it's a little, little sousson, isn't it? Um, and then I'd, I'd like to also apply the tag of uh, servants, because... Um, this is kind of asking someone to do something for me. So I'm kind of just going to ask like I assume they're going to say yes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because they should. Yeah, no, it's weird when you, when you talk about that in your accent, it makes it even more compelling. <clears throat> exactly. Um, and then I would also quite like to apply my trait of cunning because I am lying. <laughs> of course. Um, were you keeping count on that? I think we're at... Seven. Seven? So All right. Um, I've got a few more that I can throw in as well. <laughs> I've got a couple more. Just for paper, uh, well, you know. Uh, sure. Um, we don't have to go through the whole list at this point, but right. tell me what your final number is. Um, so with deception and misdirection, if you will allow me those, that would be nine total. Sure. Great. Okay. Okay. So take your nine dice out. That's the one downside of this game. If you're going to play it at home, you're going to need to have between like nine and 12 D6s laying around, which I'm sure you do. But if you're me, I hate it when they don't match. So I would need one set all for this. Oh, man. I am rolling like a very (laughs) flustered boy would roll (laughs) today. Um, That is merely three successes, unfortunately. Three is the standard difficulty in this oh, game, great. so you've met it. Yeah, uh, two for things that are easy, but we kind of need to check anyway. Three is standard, and then as it gets increasingly absurd, we go up. So three is plenty. Great. And uh, what was this guard's name? Penelope. Penelope. Wow, I gave her a very uh, different accent than I would have had I don't known that in the beginning. Uh, okay, well, so Penelope's like, yeah, that, that's fine. Um, God, yeah, I, I, you know, I, I really shouldn't, but and then she's looking at you, and she's looking at you, cause like you're a noble man. They, they don't, they don't cut the commoners out of the same cloth. It's that, oh God, it's like, oh, <clears throat> sorry, uh, right, got lost in your jawline. Where are we going? Oh, don't worry about it. Um, frankly, I was lost in your eyes, so same boat. Um, oh, stop. If you'll, if you'll just follow me. 
um, and he will turn on his heel and lead them down to the brig. Uh, well, at this point, Penelope would follow you literally wherever you wanted to go. Uh, but eventually you will cross in through a door. And at this point, I imagine, Naomi, you are you are waiting patiently. Or impatiently, as it may be. I mean, yeah, Im- impatiently. But um, honestly, I guess it doesn't really surprise me that he would take this long. <laughs> But that's another five successes with my... Just... Fantastic. Wow. Um, this has got to be traumatic for you, Cyrus, because now you've seen what Naomi does to women who try to get Tristan's attention. <clears throat> to be fair, it was always meant to happen this way for this poor lady. Hmm. Well, that is two outfits for you, which is plenty for now you to escort Naomi around the ship as was well your original plan. I'm uh, going to assume that the rest of you are uh, decent and dignified people and will not watch the captain change. That is unless there's something about Lord Blackbird that has changed in the last hour or two. Well, you know, um, I'm just, I, I mean, I've never... <sighs> I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it's it's odd, isn't it? Really, because you know, when when you're you're trying to be proper all the time and and trying to sort of maintain an air or whatever, you know, you can't you can't really show interest in anyone like that. You know, it's all very don't show your ankles. But she just doesn't seem to care, and there's just something there's just something about the way that she's just free and. I don't know. I find that appealing, but I, I, I will avert my gaze. I, we don't know each other that well yet, and I don't know. The moment Tristan decides to finally turn around, at the last second of that, Cyrus will meet his gaze and give a little wink before he turns around. Um. <clears throat> <laughs> <clears throat> <clears throat> uh, please turn around, Naomi. It's not polite to stare. You're so funny if you think that I'm looking at you. Yeah, well, you haven't turned around yet. Uh, Ben turned around since she went down, because I don't even need to see her undressed. Oh, that's a good point. You're sorry, the, the phrasing kind of caught me off guard there, but you are referring to the, <laughs> to the guard. <laughs> Pen. Uh, We're on I'm, nickname I'm, terms. I, I, do not, I, do not need to, uh, I do not need to see her uh have her outfit removed i do not need to see uh cyrus don the new outfit uh i am here for tristan uh it is my job to keep tristan safe i mean i'm also in the process of escorting tristan to a very important person so Mm. sir well i should i should remind people i i I don't think um, either Cyrus or Tristan need to borrow the guards' undergarments. You you do have your own, so it's not it's not that zany. Yes. Uh, also, that's really gross. That's very gross. gross. We don't know where that's been. In times of stress, needs no. must. You need to leave them with at least a bit of dignity left. Ah. Well, I don't know if that's always true. Uh, on the topic of maybe dignity, maybe not. Snargle. How are things going in the engine room? First of all, I would want to, I want to say that I am happy I'm not a part of this awkward love triangle going on right now. And I am off on a solo mission, just kind of like snarkle against the world, like actually chanting this as I'm crawling through the vent. And yeah, I'm, I'm just going to chime in real fast and say not a love triangle. Very much not a love triangle. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> and need to make mm-hmm. it clear. <laughs> Not a love triangle. I wanted to thank you. bring up the analogy that it felt weird being the fourth wheel in this, but that that actually makes That's it correct again. So, <laughs> <new wheels. laughs> vehicle has. Yeah. so I don't know. Maybe maybe uh, the addition of Snargle in this love triangle would actually even it all out. And just for the future, uh, if you ever want to get your goblin strange on, I'm there for you. <laughs> what we're saying is we found the perfect number for membership of a polycule here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, honestly, and, Naomi, who knows? Who and knows? To, and to remind you, Snargle can change shape. I know. 
I know. <laughs> and Get bigger, color. That, Get smaller. Has not, <laughs> that has not left this mind. All right. Well, that is something that you can put up on the objectives shelf. Uh, but to get there, you're certainly not going to indulge in those activities on an Imperial warship when you're about to go to jail. So if we want to, uh, God, no, that, that was like, I, you're right. The fourth wheel thing doesn't work at all. Cause like, that's a car, uh, yeah. to get there, we have to get off the ship first. So, uh, mm-hmm. engine room. Yep. I'm, I'm going towards the heat specifically because I figure this is a, as this is venting off from the engine room, uh, cooling the ship down. I imagine it starts getting pretty toasty. There's there's sweat on my brow. I'm trudging through on my, my oh, punch the microphone. I'm trudging through <laughs> on my uh, my arms. Uh, what do I find at the end of this? Uh, well, um, it's a it's a steampunky vessel, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, we've got boilers all along the side of it, um, in kind of like a V shape, and the next to those V shapes are the pistons that are pumping up and down uh, in tandem with one another and all of that driving a large shaft in the in the middle underneath a walkway that will then go out to the propellers on the back. And you're right about the heat. Uh, they have to circulate water past all these things to aid for the steam to, to power the turbine. But then also uh, that water <clears throat> gets pushed up to the outside of the ship through pipes where the heat can radiate out. Mm-hmm. Um, you're familiar with this kind of engine, like all, all sky technology is more or less within one standard deviation of understandable. This is just way bigger than anything you've ever seen. Okay, that just makes this more exciting for me because uh, the bigger the the thing, the louder of noise it's going to make when it finally comes apart and rattles to pieces. Kale always yells at me like, don't drive it too hard because the <laughs> it's gonna rattle apart and i'm just like finally <laughs> you know a challenge um and i start climbing down are, are there workers around am i am i alone here? Oh, oh yeah no um I, I i've been hesitating to use that scene from titanic where they're all shoveling the coal into the boilers but this is a very labor intensive uh, operation keeping these things stoked to the right temperature uh, but it's also nooks and crannies everywhere, right? Like there's tubes and pipes and conduits and walkways and gantries and it's it's a crazy mess of, of metal and it, I mean it's like it's almost like a dishonored level, right? You can hide anywhere the fuck you want. <laughs> awesome. I'm going to use my my goblin nature to kind of uh, remain hidden as well. Like there's a long skinny pipe, I'll get really skinny and hide behind it, you know, just kind of uh, using my environment to my advantage. I know how, like, sensitive these things are as well. I know I can easily push them over the edge, so maybe just, like, as I'm walking by, I knock a pipe loose or I switch a dial real quick. Um, really easy for me to mess it up, but it's going to be hell for whoever has to fix it. Indeed. It's that whole uh, $5 to hit the thing, $10,000 to know which thing to hit. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, I uh, love this story. One question. I would like you to roll because you want this thing to break at the exact correct moment, right? If it starts to... You don't want the ship to fall out of the sky while you're on it, right? Mm-hmm. So, um, come up with a roll for me, and we will let the uh, degree of success determine how accurate your timing is on will things go wrong right when you need them to. All right. Uh, given the image I've painted here, I can think that crafty and sneaky would work. For sure. Distractions would work. Mm-hmm trade speak perhaps maybe someone is like oh that that one thing's gonna break down again and what it does is gonna be a massive issue and i'm just kind of like i know what that thing is i'm going for it you're looking in the shadows and someone's like yeah i say the uh, the number seven exchanger has been uh, acting up real quick i gotta get a new dyson valve for it but all we got are a bunch of and you're just like oh yeah <laughs> that's fucking the, dyson valve that's the, it's the dyson valve every time <laughs> Uh, night vision, I want to say, because I'm going to be in the dark corners, right? And I'm, mm-hmm. I don't have time to really, like, 
wait for a certain light adjustment or anything like that. I am just seeing what I can see from my vantage point and making good on that. Mm-hmm. Uh, agile? Oh, for sure. There are like, th- there's no health and safety in this empire. Like, though, there are gears like turning around. You know, um, it's the uh, when you're watching like um the Star Trek and there's like, the, the pistons out of nowhere. Why is this here? Why is there no railing? Right? Like even in Star Wars, the railing that separated you from like the, the thousand yard pit next, like like who would no? There's no way that that no. Like, whoever designed that, it has been fired. There's no way that would pass health and safety. So yeah, you're definitely gonna need some agility to keep all your goblin parts as you, especially because you're not using like the walkways where everyone is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I agree. Um, there's also quick, which follows directly behind agile. Mm-hmm. Uh, tumbler, and you can you can you know I don't know if this one applies, but I like to imagine like Kronk from the Emperor's New Groove, uh, just kind of like quickly tumbling by and just going. You know, <laughs> getting still for a moment. Combining that with um with the, the shape part, so you have to tumble past where the gear is, and then to hide, like there's a big um like Z shaped Tetris piece of a pipe that you then have to shape yourself around to hide as someone comes past, and then you're back to. So, uh, this is nine dice so far. I mean, uh, hey, yeah. If, you, there's... if there's anything left, if there's anything else on there, go ahead and add that up. But yeah, tell me what your total is and. We'll There's definitely them. more. Like um, I can, I'm gonna go through them really quickly. Daring, maneuvering, evasion. Uh, I think maybe that has that has to do more with piloting. Yeah, I think your evasion one is it's under the pilot tag, right? It is under the pilot. Yeah, so, yeah. So that's um, but be the ship. Sky Sailor, there is maintenance, so that's ten mm-hmm. dice. Mm-hmm. Uh, Empire, it's a really broad tag. Is that, which one's that under? That's under Sky, Sky Sailor. Sailor. I think it's more about like um, signals and flying and, and making out ship types. The, okay. the uh the guts of this thing are, i mean technically they're more kale's bit but it's easier to break stuff than to fix it so you're doing okay there okay so um i'm gonna go with 10. 10 seems like a pretty good dice pool to roll from let her rip okay Ooh, I'm, I'm nervous now five successes okay no that's that's excellent um i would say uh that doing it uh, three would have been you have no control whatever when it was dramatically inappropriate for me to cause trouble for you boom engine's gonna go off mm-hmm. and, and six would be I'm gonna let you decide uh, when the engine's gonna go off uh, okay. but as I was doing that I was like well what's the difference between five and six and what's the difference between three and five I, I don't know so it's a lot more fun for me and I imagine a lot more fun for you at the dramatically appropriate moment Snargle can interrupt with a description of what happens in the engine room. Sure, yeah. I love that. <clears throat> as catastrophic as you want it to be, or if it's just like a little, like, one bolt pops off and the whole thing, up to you. Keep that in your pocket for when it's time to escape. hmm I will state that one of the things uh, Snargle holds dear is Snargle doesn't actually want to hurt people. So uh, this chaos I'm making is more geared towards like making the propellers spin out of control outside of the ship, less to do with flooding the place with like scalding water or hurting the, the people working. They're just workers, right? You don't want to. Ah, uh, yes. Let the whole ship fall out of the sky. It won't <laughs> hurt people. <laughs> just uh, three thousand uh, people <laughs> working on this ship. They have redundancies for that, right? <laughs> <laughs> they, they they shouldn't fall out of the sky, but they should be crippled. Oh no! Ever since the uh, the the hand of justice incident back in CE 172, they've made sure that those dice and valves have a backup. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> well, uh, next problem: you have two guards, Naomi. You're willing to be led around. Uh, Cyrus, you promised you would uh, uh, rendezvous with Snargle when that was taken care of. So tell me, where do you all meet back up? I would like to imagine the uh, movie scene where we walk past the engine room just at the moment that Snargle is done. We give like a secret signal, like uh, two short taps and then a long tap and then like a like a sequence of a song and then Snargle just pops out of the door. I like hold out my hand effortlessly, hold them behind my back or like in my cloak or something and just keep walking like that. <laughs> <clears throat> um, I will give one free bonus pool dice to the person who tells me what that song is. Give me like the, the two <laughs> lines of that song, just half a stanza. 
It's the opening of Friends. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the, the captain goes. So no one told you life was, and then Snargle comes out with "Gonna be this way." <laughs> and then just or tumble it, right out. Or is it that, or that Cyrus sings the whole line, and Snargle's only part is the clap. Yeah, oh right. yes, the clapping. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. All right. It, it's one of those situations where you're singing it and just like you're expecting that response, and in an event above you somewhere, you just hear clap clap. <laughs> oh, there's Snargle. And tumbling down out with a ta-da motion is your goblin pilot. All right. Um. I will keep them kind of hidden and uh, motion to keep walking as I'll uh, explain the next part of the planet was already here before we even got captured. Um, so I do suggest that next we may go mess up their cannons. And I kind of incline my head to snargle to see what uh, they think of it. Um, I will wanna... say, oh, mm-hmm. sorry, <clears throat> um, just one real quick thing. I know that uh, Tristan earlier had mentioned the Skystorm bit, and while uh, causing too much weather problems will also make it difficult for you to fly, an appropriate bank of uh, terrible fog, you would be able to hide behind that if the gunners can't see you, right? Definitely helpful. So if you wanted to go that route, I would say that that by itself will get you a certain amount of protection. But if you really wanted to go all the way, you should figure out a way to uh, break their targeting systems. Uh, Because they still have a little bit, not like space radar or whatever, but something a little automated to help. It would reduce the difficulty of any future hypothetical evasion checks if you went that extra mile. But... Altering the weather in that way, as Tristan suggested, is enough to meet the the bottom level requirement of stopping you from being blown out of the sky. Captain, you, all your ideas are good. I don't like being shot at. If we want to take out the cannons in some way or another, yes, all there for it. Don't want to die. I think that's a common uh, goal in this little group right now. So let's go for that and then find the owl and get the hell out of here. Well, I mean, there's also the sort of opportunity that we maybe have here to mess up their ability to communicate with the outside world a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, If anyone has any ideas as to how we might maybe jam their comms, that might give us some more time. I like how the weaver thinks. That's exactly it. Yes. Wow. I'm a weaver. The okay. weaver, that's quite ominous. <laughs> Doesn't it? It has multiple meanings. Mm-hmm. I like that. Snoggle, you're great. Okay. Uh, well, two things about the communication system. Um, one, huge antennas. We're, we're talking like Thomas Edison era masts for radios. It's not going to be a cute little GPS antenna picking up the back of something. But because those antennas are so big and they require so much power, you know that the communication systems are normally on the deck closest to the roof of the ship. That way they don't need to put any more power in it than they need to to get up. <clears throat> you could break the individual equipment inside or at an appropriate catastrophic Mast failure would also be, that's what I call it, uh, would also be appropriate. Damn, I would have loved the idea of being right. able to hack into their comms and just putting on, because we're keeping up with the theme, like put on the Friends song, like on repeat, and they <laughs> can't put it off. And they're like, Captain, Captain, something is wrong. And they all they hear is... <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, it's just the clap. We can, well. we can, no, yes, and it. That's the great thing about this game. You have an idea. You are telling the story as much as I am. So if that is what you want to do, we will make it happen. Heck yeah. Um, I will, I, I'll throw out suggestions and things like that to get the pot stirring. But the way the game is supposed to work is that if you have a cooler idea or a more fun idea, then fuck it. I'm an idiot. Let's do that. So... <clears throat> Well, uh, if we can make our way to possibly finding uh, a room where we could sabotage the communication with our handy-dandy USB stick with a friend song on it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will I, I'll allow that to happen. I know that Snuggle has the flag, um, but I'm imagining less a USB stick because that's a little advanced and more like a punch card 
uh, that you yeah. would put into the machine and then twist it and it would go off. So I have, uh, I want to know like either A, who has that punch card and why, uh, or B, where on the ship would you find it? I definitely think um, the captain would have given it to Snorkel and just said, here for the appropriate moment. And that was like six months ago that they probably <laughs> oh, gave that to them, like, moment. for the appropriate moment. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I've been holding on to it for all this time. And your your little cue earlier when you're like, says humming it or singing it, I, that is the inspiration that I needed in order to jam their comms with this song about friendships. Uh, Snuggle, did you remember that this existed, or was it just like sitting on the, the inside back pocket of your pants and you had just totally forgotten that it existed until then? No, not only do I remember that this existed, I've actually sewed it into a secret pocket on like the, the belt Ooh. of my pants for this moment, for the, the day when this happens. Is it to the left or the right, or the, of the, is it to the left side or the right side of the secret flag pocket? The uh, left side. Okay. Just, you know, for me. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, so, um, you're going to arrive up uh, to the radio deck. Um, it's not super busy, but there is a problem because I will remind you that at the time you were captured, Captain Hollis was up in the wireless area getting that information to go back. And we're going to take a quick break, but when we ah, come back, yeah. you will see the <laughs> doors having opened. Snargle raising the card up, ready to go. And then the steely gaze of Captain Hollis spinning to the door. What is the meat? And immediately recognizing Captain Vance. So we will start there when we get back, folks. Ten minutes or so, we'll be right back with you. Each of us is the protagonist in our own myth, an epic we get to write and rewrite every waking day. When we share this story, we invite others to understand who we are in the universal grammar of the human soul. You're listening to the All Night Society, an actual play podcast by Queen's Court Games. At their best, my younger days were spent excelling in everything and at their worst i spent a lot of time suffocating under the weight of inferiority 
It takes a special kind of person to read between the lines of code and instantly perceive what those random strings of letters and numbers actually mean. Look, I wanted to be a cop as long as I can remember. I wanted to be the one kicking down doors and yelling, everyone, hands in the air. I cannot imagine an eternity squandered on so vain an effort. We are not immaculate. Our humanity lives within our flaws. I don't remember dying, but I do remember undying. That feeling of being pulled back from the empty void, how it takes you a few seconds to realize that you're not breathing. Alfred is committing quite the sin, wasting your talents like this, she'd offer. This was the most seen I'd felt in... ever. This was monstrous. I was the monster. And were it not for the beast's intense fear of the sun, I might have simply waited for it to rise and claim me. This wasn't graduate school anymore. This was war. Suffice it to say, that necessitated a change in curriculum. I remember her sighing and saying, you're in trouble, Scarlet, and I just laughed and said, no shit. Was he murdering his betrayer? Was his betrayer murdering him? I couldn't say, but I knew better than to walk in after him. I'm making eye contact with him in his... his fear rattled my core. Put simply, Sheriff, you're in Chicago to deal with the kindred monsters. I'm here to deal with the other kind. They are the angels, brought and held together as children by their status as outcasts and freaks. Imaginative and tormented, Thomas has suffered greatly under the care of his foster family. How far would you go for release, for salvation? Goth culture was the perfect escape for young, rebellious Gabrielle. Now she's traded her innocence for alcohol, tattoos, and an abusive ex. Michael couldn't fight his way out of that basement, and he's been doubling down on violence ever since. When being strong isn't enough, where else do you go? Teenage Tarla leaned hard into the outcast persona, using her hair as a mood ring. Now she's buried trauma, and with it, the capacity to love and trust. Ralph wasn't always a conspiracy-obsessed deep web denizen. What happened that turned a fantasy-loving book nerd into something much, much worse? Will these bonds hold true when they're reunited for sinister purpose in adulthood? Find out in His Last Hope, a story of lost friendships and childhood traumas for cult divinity lost.
Okie dokie, we return. Oh my god, what a mess we have found ourselves in. It's certainly not the case that Captain Halls was going to appear wherever I needed him to appear to make the most mess, but here he is on the communication deck with the, the dossier of paperwork that he has on the owl and the very stern look. Um, the man is about uh, like six five, huge, towering, beastly. He's got epaulets and a big cape that's flowing behind him, the full imperial uniform, the whole regalia, all the special little medals and stuff. Very, very, very important man. Uh, He has that uh, imperial nose, the kind of of sharp hawk-like visage that like, uh, you really only see in, in, in Tory members of parliament. That very sharp angle just that you could make a sundial out of his face by turning him around. That's how angular the features are. And the rage in his eyes when he turns and sees you. Captain Vance, he knows who you are. And this is just formalities. If he had it his way, he would have put you in the owl, ripped the engines out, and thrown it off into the toxic muck of the undersea. So seeing this moment of oh beans between these two uh tristan uh i am going to i'm going to put my hand on cyrus's arm very gently and lean in and say let me handle this prat um and i'd like to imagine that there's a perhaps um another very convenient receptacle of some sort of liquid hopefully hot, maybe someone's tea that they've left on the side. And I'm going to use my sorcery this time in a much more direct fashion. And I'm going to try and flick this water up and force it down this man's throat to choke him. Oh, wow. That's a level of aggression coming out of Mr. Hart. Well, yes, go ahead and stack your dice up and get ready for that. Um, As this is all going on, the Captain Hart... Uh, Captain Hollis is, is barking out orders. There are other soldiers standing up. It's not just him alone. So uh, we will say that, yes, uh, Tristan has eyes deadlocked on Captain Hollis and is ready to make a mess of that. But Snargle, Cyrus, Naomi, there are other goons. And God forbid if one of them made the alarm, what would happen? Oh, my God. What are I, you going to do? I fling Snargle, like, right in that direction. And they're, like, small, so they flit through everyone in, in fast speed. Bowl the goblin! You're gonna go goblin bowling to get snuggled to the alarm before it can be set off. So is this the intention for a slam dunk of the card into the machine? Or do you want me to just like, uh, go big and use my teeth and claws to rip people asunder? Go for the slam dunk. The slam dunk, all right. (laughs) Um, yeah, I imagine it's kind of like, I go sailing and I'm slow motion through the air, just like, oh, I'm almost there. That's Meanwhile, sad. I uh, I motion to the guards who are like trying to come at us or something, and I just like point a finger, look at Naomi, and say, "Hit him." <laughs> okay, so uh, Naomi, if you'd like to use more words to describe "hit them," by all means, now. But also, "hit them," I think, kind of sums it up. Uh, I wouldn't want to rob you of the, the opportunity because so far we've only had the the poof, and I'm guessing you've got some other noises in that uh, in that bank of yours. You know, weirdly, um, noises aren't aren't my uh, aren't my forte. Um, but but yeah, there are definitely some actions that uh, that I can take. Um, as as these guards are piling in, I imagine they're all kind of like scrambling about or, or running, uh, not necessarily single file, but you know, kind of in, in a slightly orderly fashion. Um, so what I would like to try and do is uh, if if there's take the the person who's coming at us uh, first in this line and I want to try and just punch him just square in the torso hard enough to knock him backwards and knock over the guards that are following up behind him. All right, so we have everybody's actions. <clears throat> uh, I'm expecting Gabe, go ahead and get those magic numbers together. Naomi, collect your violence tags. Uh, Cyrus, there's a little bit of guile, a little bit of precision, and then Snargle, I will need you to find your technology bits. I'm sure you're going to claim tumble, but I want to see what else is going on there. And then as these results come in, we will see what happens. We've started with Naomi. What is your result? Six successes. 
Enough to accomplish even the most impossible task. So describe for me the look on this soldier's face as he's reaching for his saber and coming up to square up with you. And it's that moment where he's very, very fancy, making eye contact, ready to use all of his training. And then just with all the the ceremony of you know, a, a period ending at the end of a sentence, you just bam into his chest. What happens? I mean, this is this is a full haymaker, right? This is this is arm, this is shoulder, this is torso, this is hips, this is a full body just punch square in the torso. Um, his his rib cage may be shattered. Um, his lungs, he he definitely got the wind knocked out of him, and you can kind of see this in his face as he like lets out all of the air that is currently in his lungs, and his <laughs> eyes kind of go wide, and his arms kind of like go like a little limp and he actually drops his saber as he is kind of like flung backwards um and and yes so snargle is is being bold um but similarly so uh so too is naomi bowling but just with this this group of soldiers um well technology in the empire is not so advanced that they have automatic bowling scores you're gonna have to keep your own scorecards <laughs> just so we know uh, in the meantime, I see dice from Cyrus. Cyrus, tell me how it's going. With three successes, you can accomplish this. It's not going to be fancy. It's not going to be, you know, it's not a little, there's not a lot of welly on that, but you do get the job done. So tell me what happens. Uh, I think Cyrus is focusing on giving commands and uh, maybe like intimidating people who would try to go to the alarm. <laughs> uh, be like, I wouldn't do that if you are like, I wouldn't do that if you don't want to lose your hand. <clears throat> and you have the advantage now. There's a saber on the ground if you wanted to really. Oh, I take it. After Snargle has gone launching, Snargle, I see. Four? I made a mistake while rolling. Um, okay. It's eight dice total. Okay. But the idea is that I'm. I've been thrown. I'm going through the air, I actually extend my little arms and little membranes uh, attach between my, my hands and my my body, and I'm going to use my goblin perk of glide to assist with this. So I'm kind of slowly slow, soaring through the air, getting ready for the slam dunk. Um, I'm agile. I'm dodging them as they try to reach for me. It's one of those epic slow-mo movie moments where it's like, will Snargle make it? Will, won't she, or won't he? Danger abounds. Will Snargle make it? Will they escape on the owl? Find out next time. No, we don't have to wait to find out because yes, yeah, Snargle, Snargle, you're like a, like um like a paper airplane that has been folded perfectly. Like you get that first arch up from Cyrus, and then the the nice swirling wobble as you come down, landing exactly in front of the uh, radio communication array. You have the card ready. You have to make a pose, right? Oh yeah. Um. I just, hands on my hips, stare down everyone else in this room and kind of plunk the card into the machine, jam it in extra good so they can't remove it easily, and just kind of let that sink in to everyone trying to get at me. Let that funky music play. <laughs> oh, Every, but yet, yeah. you left out the most important part. Oh. You jam it in, but you also pull the headphones out of the slot. So now across the entire ship, yeah. it's blaring through the system. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. This, this is how this works out. I jam it in. No music's coming out. So I'm like, what the heck? Oh, yoink. <laughs> and that's when the music starts to just kind of permeate throughout this ship. So now, uh, Lord Blackbird, Tristan, you are stirring up the coffee in a way that's more euphemistic than normal. And right as that first little spear goes out, it's now, 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 now. And then what happens? <laughs> uh, I am going to uh, literally try and choke this motherfucker. Um, I'm spending five of my uh, dice pool um, uh, expendable dice here because I really want this to work and I want it to impress Cyrus. Um, I am going to be using traits from Imperial Noble because I feel like educated in science is going to help me here find exactly the the way to make this hurt the most. You've studied um, biology and then also the correct way to steep tea. Exactly. It's very important. And the correct uh, temperature that tea must be to be unbearably uncomfortable on this mm -hmm. one. Um, master spellcaster, of course, everything within that. Um, and uh, yeah, then just to, like a 
bunch of bonus dice, so let's hope this works. <laughs> Six successes. That is more than you ever need. One question I'll ask, then it's on to you. When you're pouring tea into someone's face, is it milk then tea or tea then milk? Oh, in this situation, 100% the water goes first, as any good noble will tell you, is constant throughout the process. <laughs> So all of these things are happening at once. There's Naomi causing absolute physical chaos. Uh, Cyrus Vance like an NFL quarterback, hurling snarkle at the exact part and then scrambling up with the saber, making you know the come at me bro from the, uh, the Uma Thurman movie whose name escapes me right now. Snargle, making sure the soundtrack rolls correctly. And then Gabriel, you see the T first like splashing in the face and you see the shock and he opens his mouth like, ah, and that's when the liquid goes inside and all of these things coming together at one moment. You're managing to disable people. I will need one more set of rolls from folks because yes, you can disable these people, but now you gotta get the hell out. So Snargle, you have to escape. You've disabled them. You don't you don't want to kill anyone. Maybe you do. Some of you definitely want to kill some people, but we're just here to disable and then escape. So as the first wave of attackers have been repulsed, what happens now? I think... Uh... Cyrus just uh, says the quick, uh, let's go to the ship now. I think that's a good moment. Uh, and we make a run for it. Is that everybody's plan? Running. Run it sounds ship. like a good plan. So you're going hurtling down the one question that I have, Naomi. This is a fight. They're Imperials. If there's like two things that are true in the universe is that you love fights and you hate Imperials. I know. It's it's really, really hard to like to back away from this. Oh, you can punch people while we're running. <laughs> just like yeah, when people but... come out, just punch them in the face. <laughs> but you're asking me to run away from the fight, from the Imperials that I would love nothing more than to just beat all of their faces in repeatedly. This is your chance for your Ben Kenobi moment. Tell everyone else, go, I'll hold, and then just fist as you stand in the doorway, blocking people from pursuing your friends. I mean, that does sound pretty fun. Don't listen to these losers who want to run. You live your best life. Tell me what you want to do. I know, I know. Well, I mean, as as these bodies start piling up, you know, it's uh, it, it's really easy. The, the thing is, as as the bodies do start piling up, and they they do start piling up, it's really hard for people to kind of maneuver around them. Uh, so in a way, by by creating more bodies uh, to add to this pile, uh, I am making it easier for us to potentially get away and and removing a potential. Um, stressors in that regard <laughs> uh so you know uh, uh, it's it, it's picking up bodies that have gone a little limp and just throwing them out uh at, at pursuers or um grabbing limbs and and just i mean really just chucking people at this point um it's almost comical how easy it is to be able to do this uh but of course you know you can't just beat a good old punch to the head uh, a punch to the gut um and you know it's um you know what it's like it's uh it's how many it's, it's kind of like that question how many fourth graders could you take in a fight right <laughs> um but the answer for naomi is literally all of them uh so even when you think it's a little crazy where they're swarming around her and you've got one on each arm she just laughs and and just flings them off of each other and just bashes them in with her elbow and it's it's actually really impressive I have no doubt about that, but to see just how impressive that is, why don't you stack up those tags and to give me a roll out of it. As this is happening, Tristan, your bodyguard, she's waved you on. You have that moment to look over your shoulder and she says, I've got, well, first of all, fuck, I don't know, what, what do you say? What is that line that you pitched to him? You see it in his eyes, he's like, no, come with us. And you're like, no. And then you deliver the line, what's the line? Oh God, I don't know. I'm not that witty. I'm just here to punch things. That's exactly what she says. <laughs> There's your line. <laughs> so, so yeah, Tristan looks forward and you just turn like, I'm just here to punch things. Oh. And then turn back to stacking the cordwood. 
Cyrus, Snargle, within the two of you, there's got to be some way you know to get to the hangar deck. You you know, weren't blindfolded when you got pulled in. You know the gist of the ship. you got to make it in that direction, trying not to lose Gabe along the way. Now, the alarm hasn't gone off, but there has been a lot of noise. Like, Naomi can't do things quietly except at great expense. So there are soldiers starting to run around, uh, if nothing else, then to see what the noise is all about. So you turn that first corner heading towards the elevator and the stairs, and there are two soldiers there. One of them has more chevrons. That's a sergeant, and they've already got their sabers out. And like, you, what? Prisoners, what's, what's going on up here? Uh, I would uh, say that uh, Cyrus may be still kind of holding Snargle. Uh, and then uh, once he, uh, once they uh, see the other two uh, coming at them in the direction that they were walking, uh, she will quickly take Tristan's hand and turn around the corner, and she will use her knowledge of the Imperial warships to try and navigate this place with, uh, well, not using the most uh, commonly used corridors, so trying to sneak around to quickly get to the ship. Absolutely. Go ahead and stack those dice up. Let me know what happens. In the meantime, Naomi, you have a result for us, yes? I do. Uh, yeah. Six successes. <clears throat> Which is the most you will ever need. So you manage to uh, not only deal with all the people in this room, you manage to make so much noise and attract so much attention that guards that would otherwise have been paddling towards where uh, Cyrus, the captain, uh, Snargle, and, and Tristan had run off, they're coming for you now easiest thing in the world it's a little boring at this point to just one by one all the wapows and the kapows and the other uh foley effects that come with fist fighting i'll tell you this and i want you to keep it in your pocket and you can have some time to think on this because you've been separated from the rest of the group and there will come a moment where they are ready to get on the owl and go and at that dramatic moment you will get to make the entrance of a lifetime so you have between now and then to think about what that is, simmer on that opportunity. <clears throat> Captain Vance, coming away with, that looks like seven successes? Yes. <clears throat> All right, so uh, secret passage feels like the wrong word uh, for an alternative way through a warship, but what is the path you take towards the hangar that avoids the more populated, busier parts of the ship? That's easy. I just take the corridors where uh, every once in a while there are the restrooms or what the uh, non-health and safety caring Imperial would call <laughs> restrooms. Uh, it stings and no one wants to pass by there. So every time we go through one of those corridors, I like hold close my nose and also do the same for Tristan <laughs> as we walk through. I'm like, hold your nose. <laughs> Uh, Tristan, uh, when you were back in um, in the palace, did you have a servant who was just the nose pincher for foul things, or is that a job that gets mixed up with another one of the household members? Oh, you know, some. I mean, it was sort of a thing that you know the, the younger ones get, but as you get older and you get more mature, generally you combine the nose pincher with the valet, so that you're not having multiple people follow you around and you have some sense of you know privacy. So mm -hmm. you know, we have we have more qualified valets. But certainly for the children, a certified nose pincher it is. Okay. And then based on your experience um, rating Cyrus as a nose pincher, zero to ten, where does she fall? <sighs> She's spectacular. Oh, right. Is it the technique or is it just something the way that her skin feels so soft? I don't understand how it's both calloused and smooth at the same time. How, how has that happened? I don't... She's, she's, just had, she's had some <clears throat> adventures, man. I, just, I don't know. I don't know. As a truly remarkable woman, speaking of remarkable specimens, Snargle, you don't give a shit if it smells like shit. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing well. This is the most excitement I've ever experienced in uh, a while. Like, it was exciting piloting, but we are escaping an Imperial cruiser. We have our, our song blasting over the intercoms. I am so stoked i'm under captain's arms being like carried like a football and i'm just both thumbs straight out from my body like yeah <laughs> i see smiles all across the board if you haven't hit your key just then you should again i, I will do this <laughs> <clears throat> 
Well, it's coming up to that moment. At this point, if nothing else, the sound of the song coming through has created a bunch of problems. And Naomi, you can't stay in that room forever. There will eventually be a guard who, or, or a senior officer who runs in to find Captain Hollis, to find the stack of bodies, to, to unfortunately, I'm so sorry, Snoggle. I know that they're going to take the punch card out. Because hopefully they cannot... I was able Okay. Hopefully I was able to jam it in well enough that we can get mm. like at least another minute or two of tunes. You know what? We can even say that. That it is jammed in there so well that they're having to yell the orders like in the breaks between the stanzas or like <laughs> trying to be louder. So it's um, if you have like the thing on, um, it's, it's like when you, uh, you're you clicking around on like Twitter or whatever and you accidentally autoplay something and you're trying to have a conversation, but then also like some TikTok that starts blaring in your ears. And that's the vibe that's coming over these speakers. It's feeling the prisoners have escaped. They're Heading for the hangar, hangar crew, prepare to defend, la 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 la. I thought that was really weird lo-fi mix, you know, like when you're listening to lo-fi <laughs> snippets of like Kingdom Hearts games start popping up in the mix. I feel like that's also kind of the vibe that's going on. Oh, I might be aging myself, but that reminds me of like a 2000 uh, peer-to-peer file sharing techno where like anybody who was anybody could just like staple some things together and, and make a remix out of it. Well, you might have accidentally just invented a very new popular genre of music in the Empire, but for now, the problems are a bit more urgent. There are going to be dozens of crew members and soldiers in the hangar, because in addition to your ship, there's there's the whole host of other Imperial fighters that are ready to go, all the, the pilots who were there, all the loading and unloading crews. I see that Cyrus has a plan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because whilst some guards saw our faces, like the captain back there, not all of them have. So right before we turn a corner for the hangar, I felt stop us, uh, make sure we catch a breath, and then just try to walk in like nothing happened. And like we are there to help them in the hangars. Um, I, that works for you and for Tristan. What are you going to do with Snargle? Snargle is small. Snargle is a football. <clears throat> ah, you can make a little pocket snargle. <laughs> pocket snargle. And just say, shh, be quiet right now. Mommy's gonna handle this. <laughs> all right. I will ask for a roll. I want to see all the swagger and confidence you can muster as you just walk in like you own the place. Um, one of you, it's Cyrus's plan, so I feel like I'm going to do that. But uh, normally, Tristan, you'd be, you'd be uh, able to only help with one dice. Mm-hmm. I would like you to make a second roll. I would like to see how well you do on this plan. And then okay. depending on the number of successes Tristan gets, that will determine the difficulty that Cyrus has to pull off. I'm, I'm so pretty sorry. sure that Tristan can roll better than me. <laughs> like, he is more fit for this. We're gonna do our best. <laughs> okay, so let's do this. Imperial Noble, Unos. Okay, right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for etiquette. Um, once again, we're, we're somewhere we probably shouldn't be, and we're gonna act like we're not somewhere we shouldn't be. We should be here. Um, I would, um, could I make an argument for, for educated so that I kind of know what they'd expect to see in this moment? So like, given the uniform that I've donned, I know the common expectations of someone of my rank. Oh yeah, no, excellent. Yeah, you know that you shouldn't be giving orders and that, that yeah. would be a giveaway. Yeah, no, that's excellent, yeah. Fantastic. Um, in that case, I would also um, like to ah, uh, um, could I could I do something weird and tag athletic as well? Because I feel like we're kind of we're making a thing of oh we're we're so cool, you know, like this is fine. We're running around, we're helping people, we're highly trained soldiers. <laughs> is is, your, the coolest. is your argument that being athletic makes you look like a lad and no one's yes. gonna mess with a lad? <laughs> we're lad we are ladding this. Absolutely. This is this is after hours at the academy and we are pretending we know what we're doing. Okay. This is great. Um and then I would also like to do charm, charisma, presence. <laughs> All that normal bucket. All that nonsense. Yeah, Absolutely. go ahead and roll that for me. Oh, I can also take my disguise one. So, that's great. You've had that the whole time. I've had that the whole time. Oh, what am I like? Okay. What am I like, you know? Okay. Let's go. Four. 
Okay. Hi. I mean, the ship is on high alert. There is a yeah. lot going on. You are doing your best. Uh, three would have been would have been just normal. You wouldn't have made it any worse. Cool. With four, one above, that's going to take one off the target that I have set for Captain Vance. Captain Vance. I rolled five successes. I do yes. not know. That is exactly the target I wanted you to hit. It was going to be six. So with with the with the <laughs> Lord Blackbird having decreased it by one, you make it there exactly. So you are just steaming towards the owls. So nervous, people are looking at you. But you're Ladin. You're bossing. You're giving orders. You know what's going on. Mm-hmm. Snargle, what's it like in that pocket over there? What are you doing? Because here's the thing, you are a creature of mischief. Mm-hmm. This game doesn't have a self-control check, but if it did, this is where we would need to be doing that, right? Uh, see, my initial thought was for, as I'm small, I'm in the pocket, I start to assist in my own little way. I'll, like, I'll grab Cyrus's arm and like gesture broadly <laughs> as uh, Cyrus is speaking and giving orders to these people, uh, trying to make this deception check, but assisting in my own personal way. Like possums in a trench coat, just flapping. <laughs> yeah, just flapping Cyrus's arms and in like like this while you're talking. And people are like, what are you doing? All of this is happening and it's going so well. You're going to make it to the ramp of the owl. It's open because of the Imperial spin in and out, searching for smuggling compartments, that kind of thing. So it's open and you can get there. And you've made it just to the bottom of the ramp when the loudest fucking noise in the universe bursts into this place and you don't have to look over because there's only one thing that isn't a cannon that could cause that much noise. It's Naomi bursting onto the scene. How do you arrive in the hangar? What terrible whirlwind of explosive destruction do you create as you burst onto the scene? I mean, the fastest or... <laughs> The, the shortest distance between two points is a straight line, mm -hmm. right? The hangar is down. I was up. To quickly get down, I just go through. <clears throat> you do just um, some rough ma napkin math and you uh, a little bit like a Bugs Bunny go 15 feet forward. No, that's all right. Rip open a panel. Yep, I just, um, you know, it... I've, I've piled enough bodies up to kind of give myself a, a little bit of time and anybody that's still conscious in this pile is definitely not going anywhere. So it gives me enough time to kind of figure out, okay, cool. Like if I, like based on the weak points, like do a little like knock on the wood, you know, like, okay, this, this is where the support beams are going to be. This is where they're not. So, all right, cool. If I just start punching here, this is, this is where it's going to be based on a couple things that I can figure out. Uh, this is where it's going to go. <clears throat> well, put those dice together and roll, the result of which will determine how close you land to where you want to be. And this is either going to be incredible because you're going to get six successes and land like just in front of them as they walk up, or it's going to be horrifying. You're going to get one and you're going to like land on top of the fuel tank on the other side of the hangar. I hope not. And I think movie-wise, as you're doing this, the sound that everyone else hears is like that World War One artillery shell sound Ooh. coming in, and it's not entirely accurate, but like that's the, the comic book version of this. You just hear that whistle of Naomi coming down through the... I like to also think that this is the moment where ACDC starts playing for no reason, and no one can figure out why or where it's coming from, but it just is, you know? Okay, so yeah. I, I, I rolled a couple bonus dice uh, just to just to really help, uh, and I ended up with five successes. All right, so it's not perfect. One step down from perfect. So think of the best ideal situation. Bring it down a notch. Tell me what happens. Well, if the ideal situation is that I land exactly where I think I need to be, which is with the rest of the group, one step down from that is I'm where I need to be just on the other side. So if the ramp is is here, I'm at the other end of, of the ship, still close enough to, to make it there in time, but I, I can see the group as I, as I land. And by the way, it's the superhero landing. It's a little uh, rough on the knees, but you know, <clears throat> you gotta, right? No question in my mind, just instantly assume. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah. 
Uh, but but as I land, I just look up, look left, look right, uh, find the rest of the group, and oh, all right, hi guys. <laughs> uh, Captain, your show again, right? We got to get the ship going up. Who's ordered throwing orders? I... Let's do this. Already have a plan. Uh, as uh, Naomi makes her uh, superhero entrance, I will use my secret ability to warp Snarkle already into the ship so she can get it started. Ah, the secret of the warp blood. Will you describe that for uh, for the audience? Uh, it's that uh, Snarkle is already small <clears throat> and they're in my pocket right now and they're probably looking at like maybe a coin that I left in there and they're like, oh, my job here is done and they, they're thinking about like stealing it or not and all of a sudden there's this plop <laughs> that's like vacuum air filling up uh, with air again um, has Snargle uh, all of a sudden pops into uh, the owl uh, preferably somewhere near the engine so that they could get it started uh, a bit disorienting I apologize uh, I will apologize later on as well but you know get used to it yeah, uh, it turns out that Captain Vance once per session can teleport uh, themselves or something they're holding some amount of distance, the secret of the warp blood. Uh, so Snargle, you go from like puppeteer, I, I got, if, it, if it were me, and I don't understand, I imagine like as all this is happening, because the, the soldiers are waking up now, right? Someone just fell to the fucking ceiling, they know something's up. So you've got people drawing their carbines and they're starting to shoot and Cyrus is running towards the thing and there's no way you're not just at the back pocket being like <laughs> as they go up the ramp, right? Yep. Uh, then, that's exactly what's happening. Do I actually see Naomi come down with her superhero landing? I think she's on the other side of the ship is what Naomi oh, said. No. Okay, uh, that's fine. <laughs> is that right, Naomi? Uh, it was, I, it's either on the complete opposite side of the ship or just like just down the the distance of the <laughs> ship from where the ramp is so i can still see everybody uh just i'm not right next to them so i do have to travel the distance of the ship so you would you would see her like come slamming to the ceiling and then there's like a, a half of a second where she's behind the ship and then you just hear the like like Bum a building a collapsing just boom like the, the dent of the of the metal of deck of the hangar uh, as she lands Regardless, I'm just kind of awestruck for a moment. Like, that is the coolest person I've ever met in my entire life. I'm going to shake her hand. And then poof, I'm in the the cockpit, right? And I'm, how the heck did I get the ship? And um, without really even much thought or consideration, I start turning this thing on. I'm warming up the engines. I, <laughs> I want to fly out of here. Um, hopefully with my friends on board. <laughs> All right, put a roll together to see how long it's going to take you to get everything round up. Normally, there's three of you on the ship. There's only two, so you don't have that helper this time. Uh, Tristan, Naomi, Cyrus, there's incoming fire. There's bullets and, and people lining up behind crates and shooting. It's crazy out here. I, I would like to imagine that as we're running... Uh... Cyrus or Naomi both at the same time kind of push Tristan forward to not be in the line of sight and Cyrus is planning to defend with like the sword like deflect bullets and I think Naomi is just going to like maybe smash bullets aside both to protect Tristan is what I would like to imagine. <laughs> I don't know that uh, the, the magical ability of, I don't think the fists are magical. I think they are just incredible. And I love that energy, but that that is bordering onto sorcery, I think, at that point. Not the sword, though. I would be an incredibly impressive and also incredibly <laughs> difficult. But um, if you'd like to defend that place, uh, I'm just, I'm, there's no way that you do not have like a pistol or something, like a rifle stashed on the on the ramp right like that's smuggler 101 they teach you that third day of class so if you want to to return fire and kind of suppress the place we could go with that <clears throat> um whilst this is happening could i help their endeavor by starting our fog cloud mist cover a little early and just have it um a, waiting for us when we get out of this hangar, but B, start to encroach into the hangar itself with these tendrils of white cloud that just begin disconcertingly creeping along the floor. Absolutely. Go ahead and get that rolled together for me. Um, head back to Snargle for a second. How's it going in there? Uh, I rolled five dice and I got a result of a three success. 
So, so it's gonna um, be, sorry, go ahead. Uh, it's, I imagine I'm doing the checklist, right? Like y- you can just take off, but I, there's like, no, I need to make sure the atmospherics are right. I need to do this and I need to do that. Uh, so it's, it's taking me longer than I would like. <clears throat> um, the stakes are quite high in this moment. So if you haven't so far, do look at your secrets and your keys. Cause some of you have some very powerful abilities that you can throw around in this moment. Uh, Speaking of which, yeah. um, my role did not pan out as I planned, so I would like to use my secret of inner focus uh, to re-roll a failure when doing sorcery, if that two successes isn't going to cut it. Tell me what's going wrong in your concentration, what's wrong with your vibe, tell me how you fix it. Um, I think at the moment when he turns towards the fog bank, um, I, I sort of extend my fingers to catch a hold of sort of the, the cloud and bring it towards me, and then a particularly imposing soldier steps directly in my line of sight and aims a gun at my head and I <clears> freak <throat> out. Um, so that moment, connection sort of severs to the cloud and I have to dip to the side and then try again. Um, so that's where this is kind of coming in. Oh, come on. Oh, six. <laughs> Much Excellent. better that time. Um, oh, oh god, I don't know how to help them fight it out because I know that both the the most cinematically appropriate thing would be for Cyrus to take this guy down. Like he's she sees him the, the guard like stepping into your line of focus and then just bam in the chest or whatever. Is that what happened, Cyrus? Do you have a cooler idea? Uh Cyrus at this point is holding a pistol in one hand and a saber in the other hand. So uh as cool as she could possibly get at this moment, she's shooting to the other guards who are like at the other side of the room trying to suppress the fire. And as she watches this guard come in front of Tristan, try to, to hurt them, she just stabs the saber to the side, not even having to look at it, to stab it through the throat and rid Tristan of this uh, guard. Absolutely. And I think that's kind of what snaps me back into focus. And I'm able to sort of um, give you a, a very grateful look um, that's kind of a little awestruck as well. And then turn and just yank an entire cloud bank into the hangar bay. It's uh, all of a sudden, it's um, it's a uh, like a county fair metal show in yeah. here. Like we got like arena lighting from the the hangar stuff, and then now the fog banks rolling in, and then then the rumble of the engines gives you that like bass that tells you the band's coming on soon. Very very uh, death metal vibes. Uh, Naomi, you have recovered from uh, your superhero pose. What's your plan? Well, how many guards <laughs> have kind of shown up, uh, and then how long is it going to take? me to kind of like regroup with everybody because i mean like i said i I am a little distance away uh not super crazy far but enough uh, and then like how many guards have have appeared in that space in the meantime um near the ship not not many um you've already managed to take out a few of them there weren't that many in this part to begin with the hardest part for everybody was everybody but you was to sneak through the different guards to get to where the owl was being kept kind of out of the way and mm-hmm. you took the shortcut so you didn't deal with any of that <clears throat> the thing now is that they're just opening fire uh some of them are kind of like trying to sneak in and flank and such but most of your problem is the soldiers who are crouched behind different crates or the ones that are up on the the walkway things like that um but in terms of like things you can reach no you're safe within that bubble of of personal violence <laughs> Um, is it worth picking up crates or, or boxes of things uh, and just kind of chucking them at people? Um, either to knock them off of the walkways up above or to kind of like disrupt their cover? Uh, you want to grab the nearest heavy thing and see if you can chuck it into the structure. I mean, yeah, that's the coolest fucking thing I've heard in the last five minutes. <laughs> <clears throat> so absolutely, get... Get your dice together, and as this is uh, going on, um, I will point out to those of you in chat, if you look into the roll 20, um, that is a picture of the owl, and I am not going to make any um, any calls for people, but the thing on the top, pointing out the back, is a turret that rotates 360 degrees. I'm just leaving that out there on the off chance it becomes important for you in the next little while. 
Snuggle, you've got the ship coming together. All the stuff's uh, starting to work up. You have to communicate with these people. It's almost ready to go. So, how does Snuggle sound the uh, the it's time to go bell? Is, is there a bell for that on the ship? <laughs> well, uh, I imagine there's intercom. And I kind of, I'm flicking so many switches right now. I'm just kind of all over the place. And I eventually flick the intercom switch and go, is this thing on? Yeah, it's it's on. It's on. Everyone on the ship is almost ready to go get you know, get on uh, sooner rather than later because I'm gonna take off. <clears throat> you see the now there's the smoke belching out of the engines. They're starting to spool up. You get that whine of like an airliner trying to start. Gonna be real real soon. Uh, Naomi, I see your dice have come in, and you're pretty proud of that based on the face you're making. <laughs> I am. There we go. <laughs> Sorry, was not on the right window. So I'm so stoked I forgot how to unmute. Uh, I just, I'm just so excited. Uh, yes, no, I am. Six successes to chuck heavy things at people. It is, uh, so you have the, 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 the catwalks, right? And then there's those little like beams at 45 degrees that kind of support it up. Yeah. So um, I'll give you a, a choice of where you would like to cause the most mayhem. Uh, if you imagine the, the hangar is like a, a U-shaped bit, right? And then the top of the U is how you get out of the ship into the sky. Mm-hmm. Uh, so on the right-hand side, that was the one closest to the barracks and stuff. That's where the soldiers are pouring in to, to rain down the gunfire. Uh, on the left-hand side, that is where the uh, fuel tanks and the cranes are that they would use to resupply like any of the patrol craft or the fighters. And then on the bottom of the U, above kind of the area that um, Cyrus and Tristan ran out through under, that is where the um, docking and control bay is. That controls like the big hangar doors that open and shut uh, and various of the, of the grapples that are kind of keeping other things tied down. And which of those things do you want to fuck up the most? I think I would like to fuck up the the cranes and the the refueling uh, bit. Um, also, because it's it's on one side, uh, my my thought is that if it does happen to hit in just the right place, it'll kind of put everything a little off. Um, so it's it's not uh, it, it's not going to be easy for anybody on that whole thing uh, to to maneuver around. But messing up the cranes and the refueling feels like a, a smart move. Did you even check about what was in the crate you were throwing? Did you pick by, no. like, effect or pick by weight? Uh, it was, I mean, it was, it was a little bit by weight. Um, it was also a, a matter of, a, <clears throat> of of size, right? Because I don't want, like, the really big, like, heavy thing, because then it might be awkward to throw, right? So you got to get something sure. that's, like, you know, proportional, right? Like, it's heavy, but, like, it's also a good chucking size. I, this is not a kind of physics that I have any degree of familiarity with, so I will take your word for it as the resident chucking expert. Um, I don't, there's not a good way to resolve questions like this, so will you just roll 1d6 for me real quick? Sure. Because I'm making a list in my head of what the results could be in, oh my god. Six? <clears throat> well, I'll tell you what, uh, number one through five were definitely not ammunition. So whether it is by, by whatever, you picked up this crate and it has the kind of shells that you would put in like a, a small like belt fed, sm- not like a personal defense weapon, but the kind of thing you might like put on a small fighter aircraft or whatever, a small fighter ship. And, and you, Tom Brady, this thing, and it goes sailing over. And um, uh, if you have a military background, the, the phrase that we like to use is called secondary explosions. So there's the initial explosion of the, the weapon going off and then what you're waiting for is to see if there's like a big fireball because that means you hit a fuel depot um, or you're looking for like smaller explosions around it because that means you've hit an ammunition dump and it's cooking off. Um, or in this case, it all just starts going to shit all at once. And like, it's like a Michael Bay movie, the side just wall of fire shooting up, peeling across the ceiling. And you see those poor stuntmen along it that are getting like flung out forward. Uh, big hole ripped into that side of it and there's people on the other side who god knows what they were doing but now they can see into the thing and on the left hand side of the hangar there's the the big door that was sliding and now it just starts to groan it's only attached on one piece and it just starts swinging down off of the ship and then there's the gigantic hollow metal clang uh, as it smashes into the side and starts to hang 
limply off the ship. It's important to know, Snarl. What was the timing on that engine problem? Because it's becoming acutely relevant. Well, <laughs> soon, I think. <laughs> Given what I, the chaos I had created in that engine room, it's got to be like a tea kettle. It's boiling, and it's hitting that point where the, the boiling inside of it is so vigorous, it's beginning to come out the spout. Uh, we're... we're perilously close to uh, seeing the results of my work earlier. So then you can probably feel it because you know the engines and there's um, when you're on um, a propeller driven craft, uh, like a helicopter or a plane or even a ship, uh, the rhythm of that screw turning, you kind of get a sense for it in when you're walking through the ship. And in this case, you are the expert pilot, so you can feel it. Uh, like the Lord of Sorrow has two gigantic spindling propellers coming off the back of it and one of them has started to spin faster than the other and so you can start to kind of feel the ship yawing in that direction but also like that harmonic vibration of the two things being out of sync and you're starting to get there um yeah I imagine for the the people <clears throat> who live on the ship you know who's have been out here for months they felt the same rhythmic vibrations for as long as they've been here, something has gone wrong. I imagine they all feel what I'm feeling as well. Minus the uh, excitement, the um, yes, the metaphorical, uh, mechanical mischief erection that is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, over the intercom, uh, if you're all still outside, uh, you hear, uh, it's, it's gonna blow, it's, it's getting close, you guys wanna leave. Snuggle has a bit of, uh, of tenuous urgency in their goblin voice. Right, folks, it's now or never. What's going on? Gotta go. Yeah, um, I think that's our cue to finally stop the heroic uh, fighting uh, and actually get onto the ship. Uh, the captain heading, of course, straight to the captain's chair, right? Absolutely. Why would you ever think otherwise? Right. And I'm sure, I'm certain, I know it in my bones that the captain has an official go order. Like when it's time, you have your catchphrase. If it were a TV show at the end of the episode, like, you know, like they have Make It So in Star Trek. I haven't seen Firefly in a while, but everybody has a catchphrase. What is yours? Oh, God. <laughs> I'll give you a second to think on that because at this point, Naomi, uh, Tristan, the, the danger is rising. You know, you got to get on the boat. Um, bodyguard, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with this, but um, in, in Secret Service protocols, if there's some kind of an event and the president isn't moving fast enough, they just fucking pick him up. <laughs> oh, that was... Throw... All yeah. right, go nuts. Oh, that, that was absolutely <laughs> the plan. No, as soon as all the explosions go off, and I'm, I'm just kind of relishing in this, which actually, um, I, I did have a question. Does that activate my key of vengeance? Because I feel like that's probably like striking a blow against the Empire, right? Oh, yeah, 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 Okay, yeah. great. All right, cool. Just wanted to make sure. Mm -hmm. uh, but then once Snargo's voice comes over the intercom and I see Cyrus book it, that's that's definitely my, my time to go. Uh, so as... Tristan is standing there, uh, you know, enjoying the, the, the smoky, tendrily fog bits that they've kind of created. Uh, I literally just run by, just scoop him up in my arms, uh, and just start running up the ramp onto the ship. And in a, a rare moment of ungentlemanly manner, uh, I... Whilst I'm in Naomi's arms, I'm still hanging on to the fog bank with one hand, and with the other, I'm flipping off the rest of the crew <laughs> as I'm being carried aboard <clears throat> and going, tell the captain to say hi to mummy for me. Uh, you could do one better, like you're a sorcerer. You have to rely on your finger. You can just mm. stir up the smoke in front of the ship and just have, like two gigantically upward curved middle fingers behind the engines. Oh, hell yeah. And that is what I'm imagining as the sh ship starts to shudder to life, snuggles the engines going, the door comes up, the owl lifts just off the deck, and then straight out, and there's going to be that dip at the beginning, just enough to make the audience wonder if the ship is going to make it before it comes shooting up straight into the sky. And leaving in its wake, you normally see that little spiraling turbulence on the back end of an engine, but in this case, they spiral into two upwardly curved middle fingers. Snarkle, 
this all comes down to you because the fog is good but there's still some stuff going on and escaping a hangar that is starting to explode is part of a problem and not for nothing that engine spinning right the one's going too fast when they're out of bank that means the whole ship's going to start to yaw on its angle so you not only have to avoid the gunfire that thank god there is some uh fog blocking them but also the front of the hand of the sorrow is going to swing towards you so i mean ordinary people worry about that kind of thing sure but you are a goblin pilot god tell us what you do oh goodness um as this thing kind of starts leaning towards us it's it's most people would be like oh i gotta get around it i am going to hug the belly of this ship of the owl directly I like anticipating where the Hand of Sorrow is going to be. I'm going to hug them. I'm going to make it risky for them to fire on themselves because I am going to be so close. I'm going to come up around and then <laughs> once I'm in their blind spot, I'm going to take off through the sky. Uh, so all of you, your uh, captain, you're watching this. Um, I need to know where have Naomi and Tristan, have you managed to find your seat when the engines go from running to just like full on afterburner speed? Oh yeah, I'm very fast. I'm very, very fast. And Tristan doesn't weigh that much. So it's not difficult. It, I'm, I'm not slowed at all. Uh, so as soon as we you know, <clears throat> run up the ramp and, and the ramp is, is shut behind us and I'm sure that there's no soldiers aboard, you know, it, it's just, it's straight up to the deck and just toss Tristan down. I don't want to say like, I, I, don't, I don't really like the word toss, but like, I also don't like just gently lower him down into the seat. Um, so somewhere between a toss and a gentle lowering, um, and you know, then I, I, I take my own seat and we get ourselves strapped in uh, before all of these crazy maneuvers start coming out. Cause, Heck yeah. <clears throat> yeah. All right, so then Cyrus, we're back to you. That question's still lingering. Do you have your catchphrase yet? Oh, uh, yeah, I do, I do. Um, I think as we kind of make that dip, uh, right at the moment when we start speeding off again, like, and going up, I think Cyrus will say, uh, well, let's find adventure. And uh, we'll- Excellent. Uh, we'll... <laughs> <clears throat> excellent, excellent, excellent. So you are off into the wild blue. And as you make distance from the Hand of Sorrow, you can see the, the smoke still belching out from the hangar where fires are raging out of control. You can see the whole thing listing gently to the right as one end doesn't make enough lift and it's not going to fall out of the sky. And if it does, Snargle, don't worry. It won't be your fault. It will have been Naomi. So your conscience is clear <clears throat> and eventually you can find your way out into the smoother skies and looking out above you at an infinite sea of stars, looking down below you to the roiling purpley green smoke of the toxic sea beneath and just the low sun spinning constantly in the center of your known universe. Oh, I saw Gabe make a big sigh and I thought that was the beginning of a monologue. Mm, wow. Um, but on that topic, <laughs> I think there's less of a monologue going through Tristan's mind as there's a there's a calculation, there's a weighing of the risks that's happening here, and he's thinking about everything that's gone wrong and everything that's gone right in the past few days, and realizing that maybe there's more to this escape than. <clears throat> well, maybe then I initially thought maybe there's something else I need to do here too, and I'm not entirely sure what to do about that yet. So I think he, I think I'm just a little despondent. I think I'm watching the sky and watching the clouds pass and sort of playing with the cloud bank a little bit, and trying to trying to get a new perspective as we escape the burning husk of our pursuer. Well, I can pose the same question to everybody else here. Once the adrenaline starts to die down and you feel your heart rate settling out, what is it you do? Um, you put the ship in cruise control, whatever. I'm sure it has it. And if it doesn't, then Snargle definitely found a way to like wedge a fake foot into the <laughs> control panel and, and rig up a pulley system so the wheel doesn't turn or whatever. Yeah, that sounds like something I would do. <laughs> 
high risk flying, very fun, but low risk, like just cruise speed, very boring. Not there for it. I'm sure the ship can handle itself in those situations. So then uh, the captain, you've uh, you've settled into level flight. Snargle, you're fine. What's uh, what's the next move there? Or Naomi, as you as you see the the hand of sorrow retreat into the distance, and you know for the moment that your charge is safe. What's the next step for you? Do you go see somebody? You go do something? This question is for for everybody. Just whatever you have at the front of your mind. Whenever I have a job well done, I treat myself to um, the goblin equivalent of a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, except the jelly is fermented and the peanut butter is probably some sort of bug that's been mashed up. So it is to every other Mm. person in this world, absolutely revolting, but to goblins, oh, uh, we're all about it. (laughs) So I am in the kitchen making myself this sandwich as a reward to myself for being so awesome today. Um, and heartily well earned. At the very least, uh, you might deserve two sandwiches. If you can make them fast enough so that the Ooh. smell doesn't overtake the entire ship. I can make sandwiches for everyone. I, I, was, I was actually wondering why you get a prize and we get, like, punished. But, you know, that's... No. Goblin sandwiches <sighs> for everyone. I'm gonna make... Four. Uh, I'd make one for Kale, but he's not here right now. Good deed goes unpunished, eh? Hey, Naomi, lighten up the mood. We just outwit the Empire. How many can say that? I just take out a notepad and start scrolling through all the pages of tally marks of times that I've been able to fuck with the Empire. And it just keeps going. Well, how many times have you actually blown up one of their ships? And not just one sandwiches. Of them. Okay, well. <laughs> An actual hand of sorrow. All right. Okay. All right. Fine. You got me. You all did great. Here's your victory <clears throat> sandwiches. Enjoy. Thank you, Snuggle. I. Oh, my goodness. Oh, wow. What is. Why does it. What is it. Goblin delicacy? Oh. Why does it smell why like is that? Why is it. Is it. I'm sorry, is is my is mine is anybody else's twitching? Mine's I would like now. to a little bit I would like to <laughs> Sorry. I would like to imagine that Captain has a little drawer uh, next to their chair <laughs> just for this specific occasion. So without Snargle and ever noticing, they just like chug it in there and just amusingly look at the other two waiting. <laughs> Captain, you must be so hungry, I'll make you another one. Another victory sandwich. Oh, do whatever you can. Let it be, Snargle. Ah, as long as the ship is still flying, right? Oh. Yeah, it should be flying. Oh, but you're going to want to ration your supplies because ports are far and few between in the blue yonder. That's true. And how many How many goblins am I going to find like in the immediate vicinity, right? Mm-hmm. No guarantees the next port is going to have a goblin mart, right? Thank God. And it's not like the Imperial stores have a special section for goblins. That's not how they do. Much as I love the captain, I'm gonna save the rest of my my jelly and bugs for later. I, uh, I'm imagining that there's a, a, a chain of stores, and it's called Greg's, but it's like G R is an acronym, so it's like Goblin <laughs> uh, Requisition Eatery something something something. You know? <laughs> it's G apostrophe a G apostrophe eggs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, and it's the green letters instead yeah. of the uh, the normal ones. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, well, I um, I would like to have a conversation, but I need to uh, I need to know what Cyrus plans on doing first, and what conversation comes out of Cyrus before I can have mine. So, well, uh, that's a lot of pressure all of a sudden. Um, I mean, don't don't worry about it. You, I mean, in in character, you don't know this. I just assumed that you were going to do something uh, before, you know, uh, it, with this time. And I just need to go after you. I, I am not planning to do something with this time. Um, I am. I was assuming that if anyone on board wanted to talk, it would be well, Tristan and his bodyguard. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Yes, yes, but you can understand why I would assume that you would want to talk to Tristan. 
I would not know why you would assume mm, that. No, I of mean, course not. I mean, even if that were the case, you'd only have to wait, what, like three or four minutes? So Tops, tops. Um, throughout the entire sandwich altercation, um, Tristan's eyes kind of are finding their way to Cyrus um, more often than not. Um, and he, I, I, I put the sandwich kind of on my lap. And I'm like, Snuggle, um, thank you, really. Um, I, I can't say I'm used to this delicacy, but I'll, I'll give it a go. You're so um, welcome. I just, um, I, I feel terrible. I, um, I feel like I haven't been entirely forthright with either of you. Um, and, uh, well, people who almost die together sit together, right? So, better time than now, huh? I'm pretty sure that's not how the saying goes, actually. Except, yeah, except for the ones who die. Except for the ones they who die. They don't stay together. No, no. Usually no. they're quite, uh, quite separated, maybe. Um, okay, well, wait, wait. That comes down to how they die, right? Uh, some of them stay together, some of them don't. Oh, well, exactly. Uh, in the Empire, that's often far more literal than I'm comfortable with. Uh, but um, sorry to interrupt. Yes, um, I, I suppose I should start by saying I, I lied when I told you my name was Tristan. It, it isn't. Um, my name is Nathaniel. Um, Nathaniel Blackbird. And I didn't lie to you when I said I was on the run. I am, and I need your help now more than ever. Well, it's not an uncommon thing for someone to change their name when they're on the run, so don't worry about that, but you're on our ship now. We're helping you regardless of who you are. I'm not keen on throwing people overboard. I think it's a bit, uh, much. I appreciate that. Um, That's the kind of barbarism that uh, Imperials are known for. But on that note, you would know Blackbird is like the Imperial family. I mean, they're not the kings, but like they're they're number two on the list, right? Like. I, I think uh, as that saddles then. Um, Cyrus just like squints for a moment and then raises a, a finger in like an, an O moment like you're part of the well one of the biggest families in the empire yeah. <laughs> um, you may or may not have heard of maybe a small stink in the Imperial City um, recently, where um, perhaps there are a lot more guards than usual. Um, perhaps they were desperately looking for someone and could not find him. Um, and perhaps they were reticent to say who it was unless it causes a massive public outcry. Uh, that may or may not have been me. Um, I very much intend to escape with my life. They would rather I did not. Either that, or that I remain sequestered within their power forever. Um, specifically within the power of a very awful man, who would ensure that I no longer be a problem for my family. My disobedience has been noted many a time. But within the past month, more so than ever, I may have helped a prisoner escape, and with that, it, it is a crime that cannot be forgiven. And so my only way I can make up with that is either by my death and replacement with my far more obedient sister, or by my relinquishing my freedom and my soul forever, neither of which I intend to do. I'm assuming you knew about all of this. No, I'll say we pointing to Naomi. 
of course. You don't take on a job like this without having all the information. Right. Well, clean up the sour faces. It's not necessary for anything. If anything, I think this ship gets wanting to run away from the Empire more than, well, a few other smugglers. But I guess it'll be does the more exciting to see where we're actually bringing you if that is still the same and that also hasn't changed just like your name did nope that uh very much is the same uh do you remember that uh that criminal i mentioned uh, well um there's another fun name you should probably know and that name is uriah flint um I helped him escape from the clutches of my parents, and I need to find him. As Uriah you've been... Flint, oh, sorry, Uriah Flint is a notorious pirate. Lord. There is no one in the world who hasn't heard that. It, he's, he's one of those one-name people, right? You can, you can just say Leo, and everyone knows who you're talking about. Uriah is one of those names. Yeah, as, as this conversation has been happening, uh, and the mention of uh, Tristan now being revealed as Lord Blackbird, um, Nathaniel Blackbird, nothing, no gears are kind of going in my head. I'm just enjoying my sandwich. The name literally means nothing to me, but when Uriah Flint's name is mentioned, my eyes go wide, and I'm just like, oh, oh, he's, he's a big bad pirate. He's not bad. He's actually quite lovely. He's lovely. Oh, okay, okay, okay. He is. Uh, but everyone I know is is scared of the <laughs> Uriah. He's infamous. Well, as somebody who works for him, I can tell you that he's actually a really decent guy. Oh, good, 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 good. I like decent people. He's actually incredibly decent and, and very polite, and well mannered, and kind and gentle. And well, he talked to me like I was a person, not a title. And I have not had, I have not had that experience before. I may be twenty-three years of age, but until that week that I spent with him, I was simply a rank held within a body. I was not a person. But then I spoke to him, I spent a week tending to his wounds, and I ceased to be simply a vessel and I became Nathaniel. I became somewhat of the man I want to be. And I would like to keep being that man. Not what the Empire wants me to be. He has a way of doing that. Rescuing people from the darkest points of their lives and building them back up and giving them space and freedom to really come into their own. Well, look, to be frank here, I mean... I've never met Uriah myself. I'm sure he's as lovely as you describe him to, but you gotta realize you're on the ship now. You just left the Empire. You're free no matter where you go. Your new person, whatever you call it, you're still that, regardless of you going to Uriah or not. You could go in the entire other direction and still find a new purpose for yourself as Nathaniel or as Tristan or as however you want to be named. Not to say we will bring you there, of course. We're set on the course, but just something to think about, you know. That new freedom doesn't disappear if you turn in the other direction. How did you... You are... I, I don't know, I... I've never been around anyone like any of you, really, and Cyrus 
How did you find that freedom? You, you command it as though it is effortless, and I cannot help but admire the way you walk as though the stars should part for you. Let's just say that at some point in life, you decide that perhaps you don't want to be just another number in a group of soldiers ready to die for something you don't actually believe in. If I'm going to die, I'm going to die fighting for something I believe in. Or being able to tell one hell of a story about it afterwards, whichever comes first. Because that is this freedom that spreads out in every direction in the blue yonder. When you're in the sky, you can be whoever you want to be. You can go wherever you want to go. A new name in every port and a new adventure every time you set your feet down. At the moment, and I say it that way because God knows what might change in the next little while, at the moment, the next stage of our adventure is going to be at one of the many ports in the region. You have two things to figure out. One, what happened to Kale Arkham? And two, you have to prepare this ship for your journey into the remnants. The remnants are quite dangerous. The owl needs fuel and maybe a couple upgrades to make that trip worth doing. And we'll see how your talents serve you in the dirty underbelly ports of the Blue Yonder. Whether or not they will suit you as well as they did escaping the Hand of Sorrow. All of that is going to be a story for next week. In the meantime, though, I have been Aaron, your storyteller. This is Lord Blackbird, again, written by John Harper. I have been joined tonight, performances by Cyrus Vance. We have Syrinx. Thank you. Loyal bodyguard, fists of fury, superhero pose, anti-ship cruise missile, Naomi. Waboosh! adorkable Lord Blackbird Gabe that was me (laughs) and the wonderful heart and soul of the crew the goblin made of comic gold Zoe playing star have a great night everyone we will be here next week in the meantime we hope to see you there for now good night Night.